Blind Submissions, where DIY bands submit songs for us to listen and react to blind. Every week, we'll bring a guest from the underground music, arts, or entertainment scene to help you sort through mountains of new music. We go in blind, so you don't have to. Blind Submissions. Welcome back, everybody, to, to another, another episode of Blind Submissions. My mic is like doing weird cracking. Mike is doing and weird things. Too. When I get like all up on it, I wonder if we broke it when we used it to record. Oh, you probably <laughs> did. It's fine as long as I don't like overload it. Yeah, don't overload it. Maybe I need a new pop filter. Hey, you know what I realized? What did you realize? You know what we never do? What? Introduce ourselves. Yeah. I listen to enough podcasts to know that maybe we should say, hey, I'm Jeff Wilson. I guess we do need to do that every episode. And I'm J.D. Norton. And we already right? said what the name of the podcast yeah. was. And this um, is my so <laughs> I was I was listening to another podcast this morning, and, I, and it, uh, I thought of it because it was one of those ones where there are two male hosts, and they had identical voices. Mm. And I just it's so confusing because it just sounds like a person talking to himself. I don't think we have that problem. Just, you know, raise your hand if you can't tell me. <laughs> raise your hands. <laughs> me and yeah. JD apart. <laughs> oh, my God. I was listening to one the other day, uh, two days ago. Uh, it was the Where It Went podcast. And I love it because they actually, probably not up your alley, but they dig into basically every release that Revelation Records has ever done. And they bring on the bands and they interview them. And they, I mean, sure. It's really it cool. Like but I swear to God, there's like five hosts and they all join separately via Zoom. So they talk oh, over each other no, the whole no, time. No, no, no. And it's like, oh, my God, it's so hard to follow along. And then they have like the whole band that joins so then you have like eight people oh all. jesus <laughs> like, the, it's, the, i love it but it's so hard to follow the most chaotic <laughs> one i listen to for sure is um uh, nerd poker so it's oh, yeah. brian posein and a bunch of comedians playing dungeons and dragons and it was chaotic when they were like at posein's house doing it around a table by the way if anyone has connections to brian posein i want to get him on we'd here we'd love to have him we'd on we'd love to have him on as a he guest. likes the kind of music on here yeah um but so there's like I don't know, five or six players and the DM and then the engineer Sam also participates and, and nice. there you know, it's all about comedy and it's like like professional stand ups and joke writers who yeah. like understand timing, so they're trying to jump in with like a good joke. And then as soon as it went to Zoom, it was like, oh, fuck. They had to completely refigure out the, the timing so that yeah. you could still get the comedy right. Yep. But exactly amazing moment this week. Um they they all they're in, in the middle of whatever you know they're in a cave fighting mm-hmm. a zombie, and all of a sudden people just start cracking up and I hear someone go Sam Sam Sam, apparently the engineer had thought he turned off his camera but hadn't and he took his shirt off and then walked over and started lifting what <laughs> he was like shirtless in bike shorts like doing bicep curls. <laughs> That's amazing. And then so they released it as a video just of that little clip so everybody oh, could nice. see. It took them like 10 minutes to recover. Oh, my God. It, it that's was, amazing. It was funny. That's so amazing. If you like D&D and metal and comedy, uh, that's nerd a – poker. Nerd poker is a fan. And there's kind of like two iterations of it. They did it for a long time like in the, the early teens – and then they took a break and then they relaunched it again on one of the on Earwolf or, you know, one mm. of the big studios and it's more pro and this I would not go all the way back and find the old one, but just start with the Brian Posehn's Nerd Poker. And it's like each campaign is a season. So oh, you nice. could probably even I mean, they're all good, but the first season's a little sketchy in terms of audio quality. They were just kind of figuring it out. But but it's gotten a lot better. But uh it's yeah. a, it's if you like D and D and people telling stupid jokes, it's so funny. <laughs> I like stupid jokes. And I appreciate D and D. Appreciate D and D. I like playing it with the girls, but now they're you know they're out of that. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess before we I th- uh, throw to JD to introduce the guest and get him in here, I will just uh, we haven't done it in a couple episodes. Just remind you that um, you know any comments that we make about production as we're listening to music with a grain of salt. We're running all of this shit through inputs and through Zoom and back mm-hmm. out, and so. Um, what we hear and then what you hear by the time we take a two and a half hour podcast and cram it down into the, it. the format that you can listen to is not the original quality of the music. So listen for the content, you know, the the songs themselves, what they sound like, the overall feel. But, you know, I, I forget sometimes and start picking on little I, I thought of it because I was setting up yeah and i have to flip in between listening to the the running the music through my computer and then running it through the interface and when you flip when you a b the two it's like oh man that's a <laughs> that's a pretty decent difference so uh take take any kind of 
you know, production comments with a grain of salt. Yes. Or and don't judge yourself. If you if you think you might like a song, go listen. Go to the artist band camp and go listen to it. Exactly. Yeah. Don't take our word for it. Anything else? <laughs> any other plugs? Any, any anything weird going on? I don't think so. Uh, I huh? mean we can talk about it. Love, well we'll just talk more, but like essentially today is kind of sort of day one of when everything went to shit Shh. last year, it's been a year. I since didn't. All the venues closed. I since. didn't even notice. It's not in my feed. Yeah. Every third post. Yeah, it's, not on, it's not on. <laughs> Nobody's mentioning every it. Every late night talk show. <laughs> the quarantine anniversary or whatever. No, it is. Yeah. It's pretty kooky. I mean, I just shared something. I came up in my feed today because I was reminded that I posted something a year ago today. I think we were watching a live feed of something. I don't know what it was, but my comment was. Oh, we better get used to this because this could be what live shows are like like for the next several weeks. <laughs> so, Oof. Oh, oh, that one hits hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. All right, so who's our guest? All right, so uh, we have a. I, I'm stoked. I'm stoked for this guest. Um, we have uh, Santos Montano from Old Man Gloom. He is the drummer for Old Man Gloom, um, and uh, you know they released an album. No, they released a double album they released two albums last last summer um seminar eight and seminar nine and it was uh the first new music that they've done uh post caleb yeah since like Um, 2012 yeah and then obviously post caleb but even there was a break before that yeah yeah so this is it's it's the first new music that caleb was not part of yeah so if you're not familiar caleb schofield was the bass player for cave-in and also uh was in old man gloom Mm -hmm. um santos uh, is one of the original. So there are two members of Old Man Gloom who have been who've been in it the whole time. The Santos members, and, yeah. and uh, Aaron Turner from ISIS. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to admit to something semi embarrassing here. So <laughs> I, I love ISIS. I had a total blind spot for all of these Boston bands. You know this, yeah. like like as much as I was consuming music in the you know the late '90s and listening to exactly the kind of music that those guys were making, I just completely missed cave in old man gloom and i go back to it you know now that i know about it yeah it's like some of my favorite music how did i miss it i mean that's kind of the point of again (laughs) kind of the point of all of this exactly but but, uh yeah i feel like such a dipshit like why didn't why why, where was i in 1999 how did i not know that there were these great bands doing this fun you know exciting heavy heavy stuff that was off the beaten path yeah and, and even associated with bands that i was listening to <laughs> yeah completely it's completely. like I, it's like i didn't find the aaron turner jump off point from isis i just went yeah. i just went farther down the the isis rabbit hole right yeah the isis rabbit and hole that, the, that, po- the post metal the heavy post metal yeah exactly yeah, so. exactly let's get him in here all right yeah fuck us let's get him in here exactly and three two one and there, he, there is. he is. Hi. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you guys? Excellent. I like great. I like the sweatshirt. <laughs> it's just a long sleeve. Oh, is it? You, you know, it's funny yeah. that actually I was listening to that this morning. Were you? Sadie and I went and got bagels and Sam Hain came on and I was like, crank it. <laughs> this is some bagel getting music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that Danzig never... loves carbs, you know? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so so you said Sam Hain. Do, can we have was, well, what's the I great mean, debate? Uh, the great debate. What is it? Someone that's or something why I like that? That's why I didn't say it the first time. I've yeah. always, I just said Yeah. I've always said Sam Hain, but yeah, other people are like, um, it's actually Swain. Swain. <laughs> yeah. Swain. It's the harvest it's like festival Swain. in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Swain sounds like a girl band. It sounds like Haim, sort of. Haim. 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 I don't know how they pronounce their name. I'm oh, you're thinking it. of him. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, his infernal majesty. <laughs> yeah. Is that really what it stands for? Yes, that's yes. really what it stands for. <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea what that band sounds like. It's just one of those things, like a lot of bands, where I was like, yeah, that's not for me. I know that's yeah. not for me. It's, exactly. uh, I'll call it like Ghost Before Ghost. Not in, in that it doesn't sound like a Blue Oyster Cult ripoff, but it's like this weird kind of loungy, gothy vocal vibe on top of just boring ass modern yeah. <laughs> rock, heavy rock or maybe a like little bit of metal. New metal, new and new. No, a little, a little more ambient and pretty. It's like it's n- it's not infernal at all. No, there's just like just like about Ghost it. is not terrifying. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. I never got into it, and the association with fucking Bam Margera was enough to make right. me go. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I don't need any. Yeah, it did have quite a uh, cult following though. 
Yeah. I think it's like, I think people just liked the logo a lot. That's what it felt like anyway. Yeah. It was like, oh, it's a pentagram, but it's a heart. It's a heartogram. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I wonder so, hey, if there's more. No. <laughs> I wonder if there's more him heartogram tattoos or Jane Doe tattoos. I really oh, like to, man. Uh, well, you know. Okay. That's a that's a that that is something to dig into. Yeah, we could, we should a him combination. Like, are there people that have both? I'm sure there has to be, right? I'm sure. Yeah, if we look back at at those generations and the like, like the finger stash. Oh, is that, God, you know yeah. how, how many how many <laughs> yeah. how many of those are there? And then the um, oh, fuck, I just thought of one. I, this is interesting. My my Eva, my 13 year old daughter, woke up this morning and went, oh, you know what I want to get is a tattoo. I want to get two you know two spots on my finger so I can have a little finger puppet with <laughs> eyes. <laughs> oh boy! But if you're, I mean, um, it's better than just getting like a neck tattoo as your first tattoo. I mean, two yeah. dots on the finger. Probably yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, and I have an older daughter who's 18 and she's kind of the youngest and or even younger of the like Harry Potter craze. And mm -hmm. like that Deathly Hallows tattoo, I think is going to rival the the him. Is or, that the oh, yeah. triangle circle? The triangle yeah. circle thing. Yeah. I see that one a lot. Everywhere. A lot. I think that yeah, one yeah. might win just because of the, the reach of, yeah. and, the, and the length of time that Harry Potter has been like a cultural force. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's kind of surprising you don't see that many Death Eater tattoos, right? Of people who are like, nah, man, I'm slithering all the way. <laughs> yeah, Death Eater. I'm down with the bad guys. Yeah, down with the bad guys. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was, I think it was uh, when we had Christian from Whores on. Um, he was talking about how you know Black Flag is one of his favorite bands, and he really wants a Black Flag tattoo. But he's like, I, I'm Can't not going to get a Black Flag tattoo. <laughs> like, it's like, the... yeah. Same with the Danzig tattoo. It's like yeah, I exactly, wanted one right? since I was 11 years old, but I've just been like, yeah. Even then, I was like, no, no, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's funny. I was, I was um, admitting to a to a blind spot in my. So I've been listening to, consuming, playing music since I was, you know, 12 years old. I'm in the late forties now, <laughs> so you know I come from a certain uh, time and place, and I I listened to the shit out of ISIS and all the post metal bands. The I band you have to say the band or else ISIS, you get on the a watch list. ISIS, yeah, the, the <laughs> band, the band, the band. Um, Parentheses. I missed Cave In, and I missed all of those Boston. I missed the missed whole the Boston, Boston band. I don't know how. It, uh, maybe I'll just call it. I was in California. I was in the Bay Area, and it just yeah. some somehow escaped me, but. I just missed that whole scene, and then I, you know, discovered it years later, and went like, "What the fuck was I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty good time. I mean, what was what was your jam at? Like, I mean, two thousand one. What were you knee deep in? Oh, uh, high on fire, uh, Mastod you know, Mastodon. So then, how did you miss all I that? Know, that is weird, man. Yeah, I mean, all the post metal bands, Baroness. I mean, you know, anything I could get my hands on that was in that orbit. I, right. I, I mean, I listened to Panopticon probably like ten thousand. <laughs> I, I I don't know what it was, and and uh, you know, I loved kind of the, you know, I missed I I missed all, maybe it was that noise classification that's turned me off. Like I misunderstood what that meant because I even missed a band like Unsane, who I now right. out, uh, fucking love. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean that was like that stuff was. I mean that was in 99 to 2001 like that was my obsession even before i moved to boston i was just like what is well you know i was friends with aaron from santa fe so yeah. he was sending me like cdrs of the stuff he was gonna put out which at that time was like you know he sent me a cdr of until your heart stops and i remember putting it in just being like what wow. the this is what you're putting out like this exists out there like i, I mean it, I, i'd never heard any i mean you know at that time nobody had heard anything quite like until your heart stops so i kind of feel like breaking rank here normally we ask at the very end uh you know about hometown music but i think this is a good since, since you brought <laughs> this it is up a good segue well because jd did some was doing some digging and he's like i'm gonna ask him you know his favorite bands from new mexico but i I can't find any. <laughs> That's so the thing. I, I don't even know of any bands so from yeah, Mexico. <laughs> tell us a little bit about what the scene was like when you started getting into music in New Mexico. Yeah. So New Mexico actually had a pretty vibrant, uh, like a punk scene, you know, and there wasn't, I guess there was a pretty, there was a lot of metal. I mean, you know, like brown people in New Mexico, whether it's Native American or just Hispanic, Chicano, whatever. Like we loved metal, you know? So there was a lot of heavy music and like heavy show, you know, even big 
you know, arena shows like, you know, Ozzy or Metallica would come through. It's like, it, it, it would sell out immediately because, you know, people on the res, they loved metal and, you know, it was just a metal state, you know, it was a big huh. stopover at that time. So there was a ton of metal, but not a huge amount of local bands that really stayed together. There was a ton that kind of like, you know, were turnover and last for six months and, you know, then they would turn into something else. But uh, the big hometown band was a band called Logical Nonsense. And okay. they they sort of, they, they, they got out there. They like did a European tour and they toured the States a lot. And they were very much in that like Gilman Street, East Bay punk mm, scene. Gotcha. Uh, and we had another band called Grimple. Do you guys, do you guys remember Grimple? That, that, that sounds familiar. That yeah. sounds familiar. Grimple was from Santa Fe, and then they ended up going to the Bay Area, and yeah, they okay. became like a Bay Area band. Yeah, that sounds. Um, I, that's probably why. Man. Yeah, I spent a lot yeah. of time. We, <laughs> Gilman Street comes up a lot. I went to school in Berkeley, so. Oh no way! I spent a lot of time at Gilman in the Berkeley Square and in the in the Berkeley co-ops, watching yeah. and listening to music in the mid '90s. Yeah. 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 We, I mean, we would we would drive to Gilman from Santa Fe just to go to shows. I mean, it's like a oh, twenty whoa. hour drive. Oh my and god. And we would like. I remember one weekend in particular. We all had a three day weekend. We all worked. Like all of my friends worked at this really awful body jewelry manufacturing <laughs> factory. Oh whoa. So we were just all these scrappy punk kids who were just like polishing stainless steel barbells all day, you know, making minimum wage. But we all worked there. All the people that were in logical nonsense, you know, all of my friends, we all worked there and we all got paid on a Friday. We all, you know, which was like at that time our check was like $180. And we were yeah. like, woo, we're rich. Yeah, we balling. So, you know, we we all got in the car. Six of us got in a tiny Jetta and we all drove to Berkeley for 20 hours. Oh like we didn't God. even change our clothes. We just went from work, got in the car, drove. To, like I didn't bring extra socks or anything. We we're just like, you guys, Vale's playing tonight in Berkeley, like or tomorrow. Let's just do it. And we all just got in the car and we just <laughs> That's right. and we would do that all the time. Just like get in the car and drive 20 hours to just go to a show. So eat. how old how old are you at this point? I'm 43. No, no, before oh, when you're oh. driving to Berkeley. Yeah, how old were you when this I was, was 43 happening? then, yeah. so I'm like 65 now. I'm ageless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we were like 19, you know, 19, 19 yeah. 18, 19, it pretty much just like getting in the car. And even before then, even at 17, we'd just like get in the car and drive to well, Berkeley. Well, and that was the beauty of it is since Gilman was all ages, always, it, 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 it you could have done it when you were 16, if you know, if you, yeah. if you could get away with it, if your parents let you or weren't paying attention. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And there was no tickets or anything. You just showed no. up and got in line. And I mean, I guess every once in a while they would stop letting people in. But for the most part, like they could just kind of let it yeah. fill <laughs> up in a pretty crazy way. What was that? There, we were, you know, we, of course, like everybody, we were all like really shitty vegetarians, just ate French fries and fake meat. But what was that place in Berkeley? Like, Michael. Like kind of Michael's. It was called yeah. Michael's. Oh, yeah. We were talking about it just last weekend. It was my favorite because I yeah. uh, I grew up in Salt Lake, and when my uh, my sister in law went to USF, um, and we looked forward to going to Michael's in Berkeley because it was <laughs> just the greasiest, like grossest, oh, just yeah. nasty. I mean, not all in the best ways. Like it was yeah. the greasy roadside diner, but it was all vegan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, that fried chicken sandwich, man. I would just like yeah. yeah, that was the thing. We'd go to Gilman, and then the next day we'd go to Michael's. There was also a really cheap, like vegetarian Chinese buffet where all the punk kids ate. I can't remember where. I'm sure. You, yeah, but... yeah, I was not vegetarian, yeah. the, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, but I know, I mean, Berkeley's always been famous for yeah. having cheap food and tons of like, you know, being progressive on the food, on food wise, like yeah. it's never been, never been hard to get vegetarian food in Berkeley. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. So, so that was this... like, that was our deal. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Go for it. Well, yeah. I mean, so we would just like, we loved going to Gilman. That was our thing. And there was, so there was a really like direct, uh, linear connection between Santa Fe and and Berkeley, you know, punks from Santa Fe would move to Berkeley and move back. Punks from Berkeley would move to Santa Fe and move back. So there was a lot of that going on. And, and Logical Nonsense was, you know, they were pals with Neurosis and Buzz Oven on whatever, all those bands. And um, yeah, they were like the total hometown heroes. And, it, you know, if anybody hasn't, I'm sure nobody has listened to them, but go back, those records hold up. You know, they're, uh, they were on Alternative Tentacles. Billy Anderson oh. recorded most of them. Oh, nice. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, a while had, ago. <laughs> we had Billy on as a guest. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, re we made a it, I made a record with him a couple years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's a, yeah, he's I've a, never I've never met or worked with him, but uh, I mean. Oh, know, it's fun as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Billy's fucking crazy. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
his discography is like insane like when, if you just go to his site and look at the different eras of time too when it was like punk rock and then all the like man's ruin stuff and then totally. everything everything you know high on fire and the melvins well even a bunch of like indie bands I indie noticed. bands it's crazy yeah it's he's yeah he's, he did like job ox i think or he's job done Breaker, it and he's <laughs> and he's still like uh, yeah I think hit, he did you're right yeah. <laughs> somebody hit me up and they're like hey i want to get in touch with billy you know i text him his rate is still affordable for like a band off the street m- making their very first record ever. Like, is like he, he just, is, I mean, it isn't like the sort of like Steve Albini school of producer martyrdom though. It's like, he's just keeping it reasonable. Yep. Just yeah. keep, just keeping it reasonable. <laughs> yeah. 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 So did you ever live in Berkeley? Did you ever live in the Bay Area? No, I mean, I, I, no, I didn't. I wanted okay. to. I like like all my punk friends. I wanted to live in a disgusting squat in Berkeley <laughs> yeah. and like get scabies and and write a zine and like you know walk around in, at midnight with Aaron Comet Bus, but it never came never came to be. <laughs> <laughs> Grab people's leftovers off of the top of the trash cans on television. exactly. <laughs> so when was it that you ditched Santa Fe and, and so, headed to Boston? You went yep, to Boston from uh, Santa Fe, yeah. Yep. It was 99 and uh, yeah, Aaron was going to the museum school in Boston and we had been friends for, you know, before he, in high school. So after high school, he went there and the first couple of years he was there, we, he would come back in the summer, you know, because he was still just whatever, just a college kid. And we would always play some, like we would form some kind of project in the summers when he would come home. One of them was, it's funny, I kind of hadn't thought about this until recently, but one of them, the first one was this really terrible like just noise jam. He booked Bloodlet and 108 to play in Santa Fe and there was nobody to open. So he was oh, like, let's just open. Nice. And I barely knew how to play drums at that point. Like I, <laughs> I was like three months into playing drums. Oh wow. So we set up we set up like a drum set, but I didn't bring a snare drum. It was just like toms. And I think I might've even put the kick drum on its side, you know, and like <laughs> just playing with my arms. And another friend of ours, a friend of ours just bought a bunch of trash on stage and was just banging on it with hammers and this hip, <laughs> This hippie kid we knew, we were like, hey, man, you play didgeridoo? Just come up with your didgeridoo. Oh, shit. oh my so God. So we had a fucking hippie with a didgeridoo on stage. And Aaron played guitar with a gas mask on. And uh, that was our first musical. It didn't even have a name. And I remember at some point, um, the singer of 108, uh, you guys will know his name. I can't remember. Is it? It's not Por- Is it Porcel? No. No. Uh, it's a, uh, I, uh, fuck. He's like, I, he's I like a, he's like a Instagram yoga. Instru- yeah. He's, he's like a, a yoga yeah, instructor. I can't now. remember. Anyway, yeah. he, They're he like brought. instructors now. No. Yeah, right? <laughs> so he brought, he grabbed a floor tom from his drummer's band's kit and just brought it up on stage and just started jamming with us. And I remember like looking over and like seeing Aaron in his stupid fucking gas mask and being like, oh, the singer 108 is <laughs> jamming with us. And, but I was like, I don't think Aaron knows because he's wearing this whole gas mask and he can't see anything. And afterwards, I was like, you know, that dude came up and jammed with us. And he was like, oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. So that was the first one. And then the next summer we did like a shitty acoustic uh, set at a party where we did like a jawbreaker cover and uh, uh, Guns N' Roses used to love her just a, and a Black Sabbath song we did a uh, super knot and then the following summer is when we did Old Man Gloom where that was like that was the most calculated summer project where Aaron was like listen I have an idea I want to do this thing I want it to be really slow but sometimes really fast and I want the changes to never change. Like I want no part to be played twice. So if you listen to that first Gloom record, no part is played more than once. It's like part, part, end, part, yep. part, end. <laughs> and yeah, it was totally deliberate. And we recorded that. And towards the end of that summer and that Old Man Gloom session, uh, Jeff from ISIS was moving out of Aaron's apartment. And he was like, do you want to move into Jeff's spot and we can keep doing Old Man Gloom? I was like, yeah, sure. So that's when I moved to Boston. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Boston, Boston's such a crazy place for music, too, because you got all those Berkeley guys filtering out into the like the gen pop of yeah. punk, of punk, punk and metal musicians who are like who are like <laughs> classically in, trained. Well, into it, yeah. just fucking wizards, like yeah, totally. terrifying, like terrifying wizards, but also into the same shit we're into. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, it's it's funny, but like in our little circle of like ISIS, cave Converge, there were no Berkeley None of those kids. guys. Even. Yeah. yeah none of uh, there. You know, I I played music briefly with one guy who was a Berkeley guy, this guy named Matt Squire, and uh, we all liked him. He was he was a little bit like kind of cheesy, but he was a nice guy. 
but he just his vibe was so different and it was like the berkeley thing it was just so like it just didn't work for us the berkeley yeah. thing and and it didn't really it never really permeated our little world uh which is kind of in retrospect now i'm like yeah, we were all playing music, but like none of the music school guys really got on board. I think they just like probably thought what we were playing was dumb. Which I guess it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think they could have thought that. I think of a guy like um, Doug Sherman who plays guitar for Gozu, is like okay. a good is a good example of a like a guy who came out of Berkeley and has all of that chops, but is still making music that that sort of makes sense. And and I think there we're seeing more of that. Yeah. And there's Berkeley is not the only music school there. I mean, there's there's so much art and music education oh, totally. in in Boston. It's oh. insane. So there's like the the guy that runs the fest. I don't know if you ever heard. There's a there's a festival that they do in Salt Lake every year called Crucial Fest. Um, oh yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, Crush. Uh, the guy that runs it. He's in a, he was he's been in a, a ton of bands, but he's a drummer that graduated from Berkeley and runs that festival. Plays in. I mean, one of his bands, Worst Friends. Fucking incredible. Yeah. If you haven't heard Worst Friends, you got to check them out. They're so good. Yeah, I'll check it out. Sweet. Yeah, but um I yeah, I and you know, unlike Jeff, I think I got to I, I got into like sort of discovered that whole Boston scene um through uh, one of Mike Gallagher's first bands, Cast Iron Hike. Oh, of course. Um, I oh, fucking, you mean cast oh you mean Cast Iron uh, Mike? Cast yeah, <laughs> Cast Iron Mike, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were I when I first discovered them, it was like, Oh wait, this is not hardcore. You know, I discovered them because I think they were a victory band. And I was like, ah, this right. is sort of, uh, I don't know. There's something else going on here. And I, I think it was before all of the new genres sort of became. But yeah, Cast Iron Hike. And I was like, oh, shit, there's something going on in Boston. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, well, uh, Chris Papecki was also in Cast Iron Hike. Yeah. Who later formed Doom Riders with Nate. I think there was one other, there was somebody else in Cast Iron Hike who went on to do cool shit. I'm, I'm spacing now. But yeah, Cast Iron Hike was cool. I think they did it, maybe even did a reunion like, 10 years ago oh, or man, something. that would have been so great. That would have been I so think great. I, I missed it too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I might've gotten poisoned too, because I saw Converge once yeah. <laughs> open for uh, uh, High on Fire and Mastodon and then uh, Death Clock. So it was when, oh, right. when Brennan right, right, did right. the Metalocalypse tour. This is like, I don't know, 2005 or 2006. And I had never heard Converge before and honestly hadn't really listened to any hardcore. And I just like, I don't know if it was the venue or the production crew or what, but it just sounded like a rooster squawking on stage <laughs> for like 35 minutes. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to know what this is. This is terrible. <laughs> I, yeah, was, it's I was like it, I, wasted. I love Converge now. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I was just dumb. Your first experience was them live. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, yeah, it's a, that's an interesting point. Like with Converge, especially, you know, there's, there could be, it could really, the argument could be made either way of context. Like sometimes seeing it live, especially like opening a big tour, big metal tour like that, where I'm sure that nobody gives a shit how they sound or the you know, the venue is just like, nah, we only keep that volume for the headliner, yeah, whatever, yeah. that sort of thing. And it, maybe it sounded terrible, but then I, I could also see the, the opposite where, you know, somebody hears the record and is just like, this is way too much. This is too unrelenting. But then you see it live and they bring so much energy on yeah. stage that that could totally convert. So I could kind of see it both ways. Like I could yeah. see somebody contextually having the album be like, what is this? Or live and having the complete opposite reaction either way. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, a lot of it was at, at that point, I hadn't really gotten into listening to a ton of music with any kind of extreme vocals. You know, yeah. like Matt Pike was about as far as I got into into <laughs> not not singing, which he still does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, I just hadn't. And since then have started listening to a lot. I mean, a lot more. It's, that was almost 20 years ago, probably. So yeah, and now I weird? love all kind of it's insane, That's man. So crazy. It's, it's so we're, crazy. We're the, we're the olds. Yeah. Completely. I had a I had somebody I mean, I've, 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 I had somebody a couple years ago be like, you know, man, you really pissed me off at that Y2K party. <laughs> like in my mind, I was like, that wasn't that long ago. But then I was like, wait a minute. It's fucking no. 19. I mean, I was like, it's 2019, man. That was 19 oh years ago. Like you're holding me accountable or something yeah. I did at a Y2K party. He was right. Well, I was a total, I was a dick at that Y2K party. <laughs> Whoa, Y2K party. <laughs> Y2K party. I kept going in and turning like the lights off ago, on the party but... and being like, Y2K. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought it. I thought it was hilarious. But... I mean, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> but it's it's like so it's like a it's like a sketch. You got to if you do it once, it's funny. 
if you do it five times, everyone hates you. But if you like really gut it out, and, gut it out and do, do it, it like a like hundred times, yeah, <laughs> yeah, get to like fifteen, might be get like, funny again. Yeah. Then it gets funny again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, God, Y two K really should have been our first coronavirus, right? Of like lockdown oh, regression of the world. We really. I, I was working in IT at the time, and uh, it was like it, we thought the world was going to end. Like. Like, no, computers but, can't handle this. nobody knew but <laughs> but then it was like when you talk to someone who actually knows what's going on they're just like no everything's gonna be fine trust me we've been working <laughs> right. we've been working on this for a fucking decade yeah i think it's hilarious that it all goes back to sort of microsoft's lack of vision in terms of designing their clock i mean yeah. so it's like it's like when when i was setting up the naming scheme for episodes for this show for like our archiving purposes I did four digits, right? So if we ever get past <laughs> 9,999 shows, we're fucked. We're fucked. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to reset just, the clock. Just just like, just like, throw a letter in there. You'll be yeah. good. A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 5,999. A. I remember so clearly being with like a couple, a bunch of people at like a Denny's in the middle of the night right before Y2K and then just giving me the same, like that white, like so convinced spiel like people do now about fucking vaccine nanobots or whatever illuminati or oh, God. all the bullshit people want to believe to mm -hmm. like to justify whatever but like back then there were just like these three people in me and they were just like talking about how they were stockpiling and telling me <laughs> i'm an idiot for not stockpiling and one guy was like yeah man i bought a big buy i got so many bags of beans and every week i just go buy another one you know and i'm just building <laughs> it up just doing it a little bit by little because i know when it's gonna hit so i can really prepare and like and then another guy's like yeah man i'm doing the same thing but i'm buying like you know i'm also buying like a pack of cigarettes a week and putting it away and i remember another guy being like he's smart he's got it see because you're gonna want those little creature comforts when we're all living like cavemen and i'm just sitting there like eating a fucking grand slam like i'm not doing anything because who cares nothing's gonna happen like, because we're fine oh, yeah because we're fucking fine. fine and yeah oh, God, it's the I mean, same thing was... now where like somebody is really just telling you like no nah, man epstein and clinton and like and the illuminati and blah 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 and trump is the only one that could save us i'm just like Better start stocking yeah. up on toilet paper. Well, that's right, man. Start buying smokes. <laughs> I was I was already so by ninety nine, you know, two thousand. We're six years into the commercial internet. The you know first version of the web is functional. Everybody had moved off of B, you know BBSs and chat into forums, and all of that shit was happening in the forums. Like those discussions were happening because the people had the time and energy to obsess about that shit. Don't don't do anything else. Typically, they yeah. don't leave, you know, they don't leave the house a lot. Not trying to paint like the stereotypical picture of the, you know, the basement dweller, but they're, it's real. And and they were hard at work in 1999, 1999 already. And I was just like, man, this internet's going to be real bad for because they can <laughs> because they can all go into they can find each other and they don't have right. to be at that Denny's. They're oh, like in yeah. a they're in a chat room oh, yeah. there and like and just amplifying each <laughs> this other's internet's going to be a fucking bad insanity. Thing for these people. <laughs> Well, yeah, and then I mean, flash forward to 22 years, and that's exactly what's happened. You know, yeah. now they have all these places where these assholes can meet up and exchange ideas, and you know, coordinate a coup on the Capitol. Like, you know, we're 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 living the result of this. It's, yeah. It's so crazy. Well, and 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 because there were uns like I I was sitting above it watching it, going like, oh, that's weird and scary. Oh well, and not doing anything about it. But there were other people sitting above it, going. Oh, that's weird and scary, and I think I could convince those people to do anything and make money off of them, and so you get that layer of the kind of dishonest control, the Steve Bannons and the 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 eight coon guy, and yeah. Yeah. Who, who like who can smell the the fear, and then ultimately the you know the money in mobilizing and milking those people. Yeah. It's like we watched that movie. Have you watched um? Uh, the nice movie, the movie we watched last Star night. Wars. Oh, I, uh, I care Titanic. a lot. Um, I care a lot. I care a lot. Oh on, no! Oh, dude, it's good. It's a good movie. I, I I knew nothing about it going into it, but it's all about pe you know people who figured out how to exploit the system. In this case, it's like the guardianship elder care system, right? But it's just these unscrupulous people who just crave power and money. And just find find a, a population they can just mine, like yep. vulnerable people. They do they it all legally. Exploit. It's all legal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have I got a president for you guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's like the the biggest you know perpetrator of that same thing. He just yeah. preyed on 
terrified people. The the weird thing about him though is that he, I don't picture him as the smart guy who figured it out. I oh, pictured hell him no. as the charismatic guy that somebody else linked up with and 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 used him as a tool to do that. I don't think he ever oh. figured out the big uh, yeah. picture of what was he's, going uh, on. He's what's his name in uh, Ben Kingsley in that Iron Man movie. That oh yeah, very yeah, good. yeah, the, yeah, the that's, fake, that's the fake uh, Mandarin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Incidentally, I actually I was in a room with Ben Kingsley and Donald Trump, and what? it was yeah, it was really they were really chummy, and I was oh. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to. I want people to know that you were chummy with Donald well, Trump. Why were you in a room together with them? Well, I, I do I do production work. I do film work. So I was filming yeah. this movie, uh, this really crappy uh, movie that was Ben Kingsley. It was like uh, like Father Like Son or vice versa, where mm. Ben Kingsley uh, puts his brain into Ryan Reynolds' body. And, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember the that. The antics. What the fuck is it even called? Selfless. It's called selfless. Self slash less. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. I made it like 40 minutes through it trying to watch it. Actually, during the pandemic, I was like, nope, can't do it. <laughs> but uh, there's there was it was I didn't do the whole movie. I just did the New York unit, which was just a bunch of, you know, a bunch of exteriors. But we shot Ben Kingsley's like fancy, fancy apartment was actually we shot that in Trump's penthouse at Trump Tower. <laughs> oh. And so, you know, we went in and it was like, it's just as disgusting as you think it is. There's fucking gold flakes in his carpet, like sprinkled oh. into his carpet. <laughs> what? So there's like this whole cleaning process they have to go through. They can't just like fucking vacuum. They have to reclaim they'll the gold vacuum flakes. Up all the gold. Yeah, it's oh in, it's God. insane. But what I do is I'm a, I'm a set. I was the onset dresser. So basically, long story short, I deal with everything that you see on screen that the actor isn't touching. That's my responsibility. But in Trump's place, he has a whole team of people and I wasn't allowed to touch anything. So my job was basically like laying down protection protection. So when we're like wheeling a dolly through or cart through, I have to make sure the floor is protected and protect the walls. But you know, movie makers, we're awful people. We don't like we just are care about terrible. Other... Yeah, we don't care about <laughs> shit. So there'll be like a dude, with, you know, some like half drunk grip carrying a C stand in his shoulder, you know, with the bar sticking out the back next to a, an actual Monet. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know. But anyway, so you know, Trump ended up. He just loves that kind of shit. So of course, he just came down, like he came down from his second floor just all day long. We were only there for one day, but constantly just coming out, being like, "Oh, what are guys doing? Oh, oh, who's that guy? Oh, I know that guy." And you know, Ben Kingsley was on set, and so you know how famous men like to glad hand each other. So he was, just, you know, they were just chatting, and I don't know. It's just funny to think about. Like that was maybe ten years ago, something like that. I'm like, oh man. Wow. We all sp- we could have ended it right there. We could have saved ourselves a lot yeah. of trouble. <laughs> I spent I spent a year in college with Ben Kingsley's son. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, he went to Occidental. Oh. I spent a year at a small school in LA called Occidental. <laughs> and rich people like to send rich people from the East Coast. That sounds like, like a to place s- rich people would send their. Kids. So here's yeah. what, I, I was so <laughs> naive. I was so naive going into it. Right? I, they gave me a killer scholarship, and so I was like, "Cool, I'm going to study English literature. I'll go to this tiny liberal arts college <laughs> and take these weird Native American poetry <laughs> classes." And but turns out it was like if you went to one of those fancy prep schools on the East Coast and you didn't get into an Ivy League or you just wanted to get away from your family and do drugs, there's like four or five schools in Southern California that you go to. Ex- expensive, <laughs> small pr- private schools and Occidental was one of them. So like week one, I'm like, who are all these fucking people? Where did they come from? Like, I don't know, pe- I didn't, like they explained to me that they went to a prep school where they wore a jacket and I was like, oh, right. that, I thought I thought that was just in the movie. Like I didn't <laughs> I didn't realize that there were still places like that that existed yeah. and just like public, a public school kid from the Bay Area. Uh, it was weird. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey Jones's son was there. Good old the principal from uh, Ferris Bueller. Oh, really? Yeah. Rooney, oh, weird. Who later, who later got thrown in jail for? Yeah, he did something. No, he's a bad man. Yeah. Still. Oh, really? Yeah. He, yeah. I mean, he looks like a bad man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but what it meant was I'm in this like nice environment in L.A., all excited about music 
you know, bands and going out and doing stuff. And there are these just like insanely rich kids doing all every drug known to man. It so was much like, cocaine. Uh, it was so, so it was <laughs> salacious. It was, it was insane. It was a small, like 1600 students. It was a tiny school. It was tiny. Yeah. And one of them was little was. Ronnie Kingsley. Yeah. yeah. Little Ronnie Kingsley. Whatever. I don't even remember what his name was. I don't know. Ronnie Kingsley either. Jr. <laughs> little, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> actually, Ben, Ben could never learn my name. Ben, like I'm a friend of his. Yeah. My boy, Ben. Yeah, uh, Ben. Mr. Kingsley, he could never learn my name, so he just called me Sir the whole the, the whole <laughs> shoot. Oh, and I'm sir. like, doesn't that mean anything to you, Sir Ben? Like you're a fucking knight of the realm. You're calling this like scrappy Mexican kid Sir because you can't learn his name. Like show some fucking respect to your title, Sir Ben. Yeah. Uh, that's oh awesome. man, I JD mentioned that you work in production, and then he said you worked on Broad City, and I was like, oh shit. Now all, all I want to know is Hannibal Burr stories. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you some Hannibal. I, you know, the funny thing about Hannibal stories is that there kind of aren't that many. No. Because he was, he's like. Chill. I mean, yeah, I, like I have no problem talking, telling tales out of school, like fuck your production secrecy. I, if you act like an asshole, I'm going to talk about it. Hannibal wasn't, he's not, wasn't an asshole, but he certainly didn't seem like he was having a very good time on Broad City. Oh, really? Like he was, huh. he. Hannibal seems like he loves stand up and that's his deal. And if we have a 6 a.m. call the next day, he's still going to do stand up all fucking night in New York. And then oh, just sleep. No. <laughs> so there was a lot of days where we were just sitting there waiting for Hannibal to show up. And I, I have no idea what, what Abby and Alana's relationship is like with him. But on those days, he would just slow, like completely shut us down. And the girls were, they were not into it. And we'd, you know, oh, wow. we're all kind of looking around because you know, the clock is ticking and we all want to, you know, see our families or whatever. And we know that our normal 14 hour day is going to turn into a 17 hour day because Hannibal's just sleeping. And <laughs> yeah, he'd... I did that show for, I think I did four seasons and literally he spoke to me maybe one time. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Crap. Adobe so are you is based trying to in New York now. Uh, hold on. Adobe's trying to fuck off Adobe. Well, that's a thing I could say once a day. <laughs> there we go. Without, I'm back. Without any problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I lived in, I've been in New York since, uh, yeah, I was in uh, 99. I moved to Boston and then I followed some girl to New York in 2001 and I've been here ever since. Oh, okay. So you weren't in Boston yeah. long. No, I was only there two years. Gotcha. Cause you know, at the time I left Aaron and all of ISIS and Hydrahead were moving to LA. Hmm. Um, cave in was, they were just on tour nonstop. Constantly, and yeah. Caleb moved to LA also. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like everybody kind of fled Boston and I was like, you know, I had this long distance relationship in New York but and I was I like, sure, I'll move here, to New guys. York. <laughs> yeah. how, how did you, how did you get into the production work? So probably in, you know, New York's a funny place. And I try to tell this to people who are like kind of stuck in towny vibes, especially like some people I know from Santa Fe. It's like, in Santa Fe, you're never, nothing's ever going to surprise you, you know, like maybe you'll get a job with the city or, you know, get a decent waiting tables job or manufacturing or whatever, like normal job stuff. But in New York, like you're just hanging out with someone and you're like, Hey, what do you do? And they're like, I do this. And you're like, Hey, can I do that? And they're like, sure. Show up on Monday. And then all of a sudden you're that, whatever <laughs> that is. Yeah. And you know, I know so many people that like, got oh shit, like high paying fashion jobs and you know, I, I entered production, you know, and so I, I had a friend who was working at a wood shop making large scale window displays. And I was just, I had a shitty job and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I do this. And I was like, can I do that? And he said, yeah. And I worked there for about four or five years. And then, um, from there I went to start, I started doing, uh, like photo editorial. I worked at an interior decorating magazine as like their kind of, all over the place, jabron, you know, like whatever kind of <laughs> whatever's needed <laughs> working class shit needed to happen, whether it was like painting or like, you know, whatever, moving all the furniture out. I was just like, they're all around. So we, you know, the way that stuff works is you go into a celebrity's apartment. The stylist is like, Oh no, we don't like any of this. We change it all repaint, bring in all new furniture. And then we shoot it <laughs> as like their apartment. Like, see, <laughs> look at what great taste I have. And I'm like, your shit is literally stacked in that mud room in right corner, now. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to put it all back later. <laughs> what does that do to their ego too? Like we, it we just like makes you, but like, your taste is kind of shitty. So. <laughs> They don't care because all no. they care about is that in the magazine, everyone's going to think that they have good taste. Oh, okay. One of them I did, this is a good one. I'm not sure if I've ever told this story before, but uh, it was this, the fuck is his name? Francisco 
Costa, I think it was his name. And he was at that time, the creative director of all of Calvin Klein. I think that's his name. Oh. I know he was the creative director of Calvin Klein. And it was like, we were shooting this segment that was called like my favorite room. And so we shoot their like favorite room that they spend the most time in and where their like peace or their inspiration comes from. So we went out, he had this beautiful place out in the, in the Hamptons, I believe somewhere out in Long Island. And he was like, they were telling me like, okay, he's gonna do his garden but he doesn't garden at all. So we need to make him a garden. And so he chose he chose as his favorite room, something that he had no interest in, in at all. The garden like he didn't he even have. have a fucking garden. <laughs> so we brought in this wood, we built a raised garden bed and we had to like look all over Long Island for fully grown vegetable plants yeah, to make it seem like he grew <laughs> this shit. Yeah, like, you know, tall uh, tomato plants and lettuce and all this stuff. And we built this beautiful lush garden. I mean, it, we spent, days and days and he was really kind to us you know and was like totally hanging out with me and i would always just hire one of my like scrappy broke buddies and i i was charging them a lot of fucking money to do this so i'd be like hey man all you got to do is just come and just do what i tell you and you'll get 450 for the day and we're staying like they're putting us up at a fancy place in long island and so anyway we built him this beautiful garden and we shot it and he like you know his wardrobe was this cuffed white shirt that we've made fake dirty and we get i gave him my like my gardening gloves that i used to build the garden so it looked like he was out there and you know like i mean literally as far as like putting like a little bit of dirt on his face and he shot this thing of like doing the garden but it was all complete bullshit. and then the shoot was over and it was like okay now to get this garden off my property and so we had to like take all the whole garden apart throw all these fucking plants away yeah i mean oh, so that's oh my god that's awful so in, in yes. kind of talking, I, I need to I need to do a segue here because you're talking about creating these fake moments for these celebrities. Um, let's talk about your fake moment in the tour that never happened. Um, the, <laughs> no, what you're talking. That decibel article. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The tour that you made up was fucking hilarious. Uh -huh. I mean, that was like, I mean, just for everybody that's listening, I want to read a little blurb from Seattle um, that says. <laughs> As we always do after practice, we took a four-man shower. Uh, at least I'm mostly smooth and hairless with the feel of a Ziploc bag full of margarine. <laughs> like, I mean, where, where did this come from? Who had the uh, idea to do to write a tour diary for a tour that never happened? <laughs> like, I mean, this is all just my fucking brain, man. I just don't. I don't. I don't know why I do these things. I wish I did because they get me in trouble. Like, you know, the whole fake text thing is like something that still haunts me to this day. Uh, do you, uh, maybe you, the the fake text exchange I did with uh, the singer of At the Gates, Thomas. Oh no, no, no! I don't know about this. I mean, I've told I... this story a bunch of times, and it's been well documented. But the paraphrased version is that. We were announcing playing Roadburn, and Roadburn uh, at the Gates was curating. I think at the Gates was curating. Oh no, Matt Pike was. I can't remember. Anyway, it was either Matt Pike was curating and at the Gates was headlining one of the days, something like that. And so instead of just being like, "Hey, we're super stoked, we're gonna play Roadburn. This is the day," and like being a normal person in the band, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do a thing where I make like once a day, I'm gonna post screenshots of a text conversation with somebody." running the fest so one was matt pike one was thomas from at the gates and then the other one was walter the creator of roadburn yep. and so i just texting myself and changing my own name in my phone <laughs> and then deleting like the doubles i made it look like i was texting with these people and so <laughs> the first one i did was walter from roadburn and he was totally on board i was like hey i'm gonna do this thing <laughs> and he's like this kindly old man who like yeah, walter's so I'm nice funny. yeah he's so nice and he was like sure so i did this really ridiculous one where i mean for lack of a better explanation, like I made him into this kind of like goofy senile Dutch man and where his like responses to me were all really silly and he loved it. He thought it was funny and people were just like, people read it and some people thought it was real and some people knew I was making it up and joking. But then the next day I did the Thomas from At The Gates one. I did not tell Thomas I was going to do this. Oh, no. I just, I was just like, he'll get it. It's going to be so ridiculous. And effectively, the text chain was mostly about Peter Steele's dick. And it was like, <laughs> I was like writing Thomas and being like, hey, man, it's Santos from Old Man Gloom. Uh, we'd really love to play Roadburn and you guys are curating can you know would you you know you think you could help us out and him being like, who the fuck are you? You're nobody. You know, more people have seen 
Peter Steele's dick than your band. And then it just like, it kind of degraded into more talking about Peter Steele's dick. But this was all coming from Thomas is Thomas's end in the fake text chain. So Thomas is on vacation in Cancun, his honeymoon or not Cancun, somewhere in Mexico oh, on no. his honeymoon with his new wife. And he starts getting messages and emails and calls from people being like, why are you being such an asshole to these guys in Old Man Gloom? So I was actually working on Broad City at the time. And I like, I did this bullshit. My friend Amina, who's who's also a metalhead, I let her read it. She was like, this is hilarious. Send it out. It's ridiculous. It's great. So I was like, great. I got approval from her. I'm like, who the fuck is she? Nobody cares. But <laughs> she said it was fine. And so I sent it out, put my phone away. I'm working, working, working. 45 minutes later, I pick my phone up. I have like 10 missed calls. I have eight emails. I have 70 fucking text messages of friends being like, Thomas is a fucking asshole. I'm going to talk to him for oh you. Nate from Old Man Gloom <laughs> is calling me because he is friends with Thomas. And oh, I, no. I listen to my voicemails and Nate's like, dude, what did you do? I'm getting a lot of calls right now. Thomas is freaking out and i have emails from roadburn being like we have a big problem at the gates is really upset they don't oh, understand shit. what's happening could you could you delete it could you apologize and i'm like reading this on set as i'm like working production which you like you know is very busy and i'm just like i, I almost fucking barfed on set so i had oh, to like I, I had to be like guys i gotta just leave for a minute and i had to Give go outside 10. and like oh, delete everything and write <laughs> messages being like guys it was a joke it wasn't real i thought oh. <laughs> i made it all up yeah and so <laughs> Luckily that happened and Thomas after a little while was very understanding about it. But thank God I didn't poke the Matt, Matt Pike one because that one was all about like lizard people and <laughs> oh, which he's is been on like, board. that's the problem is <laughs> yeah. he's kind of on board. But I was like, I was making fun of it in the text thread and you yeah. know, he would not, I don't think he would have thought it was funny at all. Yeah. So, he, he has a bit of a strained relationship with all of that because his wife gives him shit about it all the time too. Like Alyssa is not having it yeah. at all. And she's <laughs> like, like she'll post on Facebook one day. She'll be like, I cannot believe I have to live in this house with this insane person who <laughs> believes all of this crazy shit. <laughs> Well, so you you kind of married uh, Matt Pike, yeah. so yeah. you know what you're getting into. It it but happened. anyway, the, the tour diary one was just like, that was just, you know, quarantine, boredom, and just yeah. being like, you know, we had all this shit and all this stuff to post about it that we were excited about. And then it all went away. And I was like, you know, the, the tour was coming up and it was just non-existent. So... I wrote them as blog post, like I made a blog spot and was just posting them there. And after the first one, I was like, I, I, I wrote to the guy from Decibel, I was like, hey, would you run this? And he read it, he was like, fuck yeah, we'll run it. And so I just wrote the whole thing and like, it ended up being like really funny oh and fun God. and I, I loved it. Was it so but... funny. Yeah. And the I, Oakland, like, that's... like yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say the Oakland one, I, I was looking at it, I was like, God, did he live in Oakland? Cause he's really nailing Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what, what did I write about? I don't really remember what I wrote about the it Oakland It was like one. You're, you met up with your cousin Andy um, and like cousin Andy was telling you a story about getting together and shooting a security guard oh, after a yeah. show. It's like... Well, so here's the thing. All of those stories are real. So, <laughs> yeah. I, my, my dad was from, my dad was from Oakland. Okay. And so he, that is, there is yeah, some my dad was a complete fuck up, like heroin addict from like 11 years old and oh. just in and out of prison, like covered in jailhouse tattoos, like peacock cat tattoos from the seventies to cover up his track marks, you know, oh. like giant uh, religious back piece, the whole nine, like that was my dad. He was a terrifying person. And we had a cousin Andy and nobody knew who he was related to. Like, I, I still, I don't know who the fuck cousin Andy was and who he was related to, but he would come over for Christmas, like many years in a row, like a, a brief period where he was at our house every year for Christmas, he would fall through the Christmas tree and destroy all the presents <laughs> every year. And then like after Christmas, after Christmas, after destroying the tree, stealing the present, he would always steal all the shit we got for Christmas and oh. leave until next Christmas. And we'd be like, cousin Andy, you can't destroy the tree and steal all the presents this year. And he'd be like, never. No, I would not do Come that. On. And then, of course, he'd steal everything and, like, destroy the Christmas tree. Oh, my God. But, yeah, that that was a after my, my dad passed in, like, I don't know, the mid-early 2000s. And I was, like, you know, went out there. I did not have a very close relationship with him. But all of his friends were telling me these stories about him. And it was so weird because I'm this, like, 
very like I've never punched or been punched anybody <laughs> like I've, I've never been in a fight I'm not tough I have no interest in toughness I don't value toughness like it's just not who I am but they don't know anything about me and I look this way so they're just like all of his buddies after he died wanted to tell me these stories and that was one of them where my my godfather was like oh, your dad was the best. Like one time we crashed this wedding and we had the best time, we got wasted. We were dancing with all the girls and the family, they loved us so much. They asked us to take the security guard home. So we took him home and he was wasted. He was totally drunk and he had a gun on him. So we stole his gun and then we dropped him off in an alley and he started running down the alley because we were shooting at him. I think your dad hit him in the leg too. It was hilarious. And I'm just like sitting there listening to this story like, you, you kidnapped and shot this man <laughs> and stole his fucking gun. And you're telling it to me like, oh, remember that time we like ate at the all you can eat buffet and got sick? Like, it's not, it's not a cute no. anecdote. You shot somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, oh what, my God. what's that phrase we keep hearing uh, in the last year? My lived experience. My <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my lived experience was not, not like that at all. Uh, can't yeah, I can't even imagine it. They told me another one. This one is really crazy and I have no way to like all these people are dead. So I have no idea how to validate the story. But he was telling me that, you know, my dad was in a gang in Oakland, of course, called Jingle Town. That was the neighborhood. And I guess at that point, Jingle Town, a guy that was Jingle Town and the Black Panthers had a dispute over a puppy and the Hispanic guy shot. No, the black guy shot the Black Panther shot the, my dad's gang mate over the puppy. And so my dad's gang was really pissed. So they lined the block with guns on the roof and they kicked all the black people off the block, like out of their homes, off the block. And we're like, we're locking, we're locking this down. And so the leader of the Black Panthers and the head of my dad's gang had to meet and talk it through. And the solution, the, the, the solution that they came up with was that the Black Panthers, they killed the guy that shot the other guy dumped him in the middle of the street on the block so that all my dad and his guys could see that he was dead and on the block. And once he was dead and they dropped him off, they let all the black people back onto the block. Oh, and again, shit. they were telling me this story like, oh, your dad was the best man. He really handled that situation. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, I'm like sweating and like hyperventilating. Like, like two people died oh, over a puppy. This is not you, normal. You, <laughs> yeah, you kicked black people out of their homes because of a dispute. And then like, uh, uh, like yeah, those are just the, the anecdotes told about my dad. And it's just wow. like, That's so nuts. yeah, the Oakland one is very much uh, pulled from my own experience. Yeah, it's, oh my God. Not it's my all... experience. Thank fucking God it's not my yeah. experience. But, but yeah. a story. Stories. Hey, it's all content. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly it's all it's all in my dna so you know if you guys need me to anybody out there on the internet needs me to mediate any sort of race war i've you know i've i've got my background in it from my dad so are you sh are you sure you want to put that out there nope i do not i do not hereby retract my hereby yeah. retracting any sort of racial politic you know violence mediation Whew. I tell you, wow. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, those are Should I just stories. keep telling horrible stories yeah, about no, my just, insane I family? I want to hear about your grandma's Camaro. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, that was my mom's Camaro. Your yeah. mom's Camaro. Yeah, that's my right. mom had a Camaro. Your mom's bitching Camaro. I, uh. I wrecked that Camaro. It was one time I was, Aaron, Aaron, of course, lived in like the fancy part of Santa Fe, like up in the mountains. His, his, his parents, like, you know, they weren't like poor brown people living in houses with wheels like we were. He had a little bit of a nicer place. And I was following a friend out there and it was Christmas Eve. We were like 17. And I was like driving the Camaro down this dirt road up into this, you know, the mountain estate of the Turners. <laughs> and I totally s crashed the Camaro into the side of this mountain, like fucked it up and like undrivable. And it was like two in the morning on Christmas Eve. And I remember Aaron like saw us crash and he came back. He was like, oh, that really sucks. Well, good luck. And he just went home and went to sleep. <laughs> and we were and like, me and everyone else just kind of sat out there in the wrecked Camaro waiting for a tow truck in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve. And I totally, I remember like getting out and throwing up into some bushes and my friend Brad coming up and handing me a piece of loose leaf paper and being like, here, just wipe your mouth with this. And just like <laughs> taking loose leaf paper and like wiping the barf off my face and being like, my mom's going to fucking kill me. Oh, Got the Camaro man. towed back and like went to bed. 
and just was like hoping nothing would happen. But of course, my mom woke up and saw her Camaro and was just like, yeah, not a cool it's Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Merry, yeah. Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, mom. <laughs> Let's, You're ready to have, Camaro. Ready to have all the presents stolen? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> where's, yeah. where's Cousin Andy? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Cousin Andy's coming. Double up. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Should we yeah. dig into some music? Yeah. Do we have stuff? What do we, we've got music. Yeah, music so let's do to. this. All right. Uh, I so I'm just gonna preface real quick. I know I, I haven't shut up, but I am weird about music. Like music takes me a long time to understand. I didn't like Jawbreaker until I was like 35 because I didn't get it. And so yeah. like the things that I love, I love. But like I need many listens. So. Anybody out there who's hearing us, hearing me listen to your band and whatever I say, don't take it personally. Don't I have it. shitty taste. Yeah. So well, well, yeah. We have, you know, there's a few caveats that we have. And one is you're listening to it over Zoom, right? So, yeah. We're not going to talk about production or copy or it's, that. It's, sometimes it's hard to avoid. Sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, we've, we've had everything from people just like r shredding music to bits to, to, you know people falling in love with stuff and yeah. finding bands that they love and and the people who submit music know that we're just like giving a getting a snapshot yeah and yeah like a in like an initial reaction and i think that's the thing too is is it's not we've we've never we we don't listen bands just send us an email we pull the name of the band we pull the link to their band camp we don't listen to it ahead of time so we're hearing it for the first time as well yeah cool <laughs> so we've never heard it before it is just like reaction all Great. right, so I'm going to share the screen. That way, you'll actually be able to see. Oh, I've never had this happen before. I'm so I know, excited. It's technology. You're not have any weird links open, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see my. See, you can see my purchase of the uh, the Zozo Burn. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. I'm really just looking up here at your uh, your tabs. What's this uh, walnut wood gift something? <laughs> That's, that sounds exciting. Oh, yeah, maybe I should. When we go oh, there? damn, boy. You shop at Williams Sonoma often enough to make it in your bar? <laughs> you know what's funny about those is those links are probably like 15 years old. I don't I don't even I don't even <laughs> honestly, it's like I don't even know that those are there. What, what else? <laughs> Dishi notifications on Facebook wow. like this. This thing that says Hadishi is a is a forum that I started with friends that we played nerdy Star Wars Galaxies video games with in two thousand one. Oh wow! And the forum hey. has the forum has been inactive for over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. But it's still in my bar now. If you want to see the real bookmarks, they're there. But you're gonna have oh, to pause. Yeah, you're gonna have quick. to pause that screen. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. Um. All right. All right. So the first band that we're gonna listen to is a band called Source. It's not spelled like that though. Um, How is it spelled? Oh, S, S O R X E. Sorx. Okay. All right. Source. Source. I would. I would have said Source. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at their logo. They. Kind of cool. All right. We got some uh, real. Well, that one. That one's a little better. The the one in their in their little bar up there is very Rooney. I know the they're runes very are very popular right now. Very. Yeah, popular. So runes are very popular right now. So it looks like they're from Phoenix, huh? Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, that's Alvin's that's how it business. looks. Okay. So is this going to be a noise <laughs> band? Uh, it's some, just gonna be sludgy. Some sludgy. Yeah. I am intimidated by the dude in the middle. <laughs> yeah. That he's, guy. He's he lived, does look like he could kiss he's, somebody's ass. Yeah. He's lived a life. <laughs> I wonder if he was in Jingle Town with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's that you know that pipeline between the uh, Phoenix and Santa <laughs> yeah. Fe and, yeah, and exactly. in, the, in the Bay Area. Uh, Man, that is you. You guys are nuts. I can I cannot believe you would hop in. A, I've done that drive. That's insane. And it's fucking terrible. <laughs> It's, from, yeah, it's a terrible drive, like fucking Barstow and Kingston, uh, oh. and ugh, ugh. I mean, we used to drive in in Salt Lake. We there was a the Salt Lake and the Reno hardcore scenes sort of like had a crossover, so there was a lot of driving back and forth to Reno for some reason. Oh man. <laughs> Oh which, yeah, which man! That the R drive that drive sucks too. <laughs> I was so into the Reno hardcore scene. I actually have an R. HCX tattoo, but there's nothing in the, there's nothing on the other side of the R, which is kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, so it's, it's just, just R, R blank HC. Yeah. Yeah, I was more of a trucky guy. Yeah, trucky, <laughs> truck, yeah. trucky hardcore. Trucky hardcore. <laughs> Any touring band knows trucky, even though it's like a ten person mountain town in the middle of the Sierra Nevada. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah seriously. You end up driving trucky. through it. It's literally a hundred yards from the freeway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the band, uh, the song we're gonna listen to is Dependence Day. Dependence Day. Ooh, it's like Independence right. Day, yeah, but but Dependence. Dependence Day. Yeah. All right. All right, Opening track on the album. It is. Oh, here we go. Ooh, that's a 
long one. Ugh, God, don't you hate when bands put bullshit in front of the music? a minute yeah i'm into it thoughts yeah it's it's not bad it like that that uh second riff had such a through silver and blood vibe to it right it was all like uh, i mean it just was so evocative of that yeah um yeah i mean from that minute not bad at all you know good yeah, I, an... the, both those riffs back and forth were pretty good that snare drum is so loud though i feel like all i could hear was that snare drum <laughs> yeah that's one of those ones where like if you go to the band camp and listen to it the way it's meant to be listened to it might not be like that yeah so maybe but also probably it is um god what did i what did i hear oh god i heard some song the other night and i was like this is really good and then i heard the first snare hit and it was just like ping was it Snapcase? No. And I was just like, yeah. oh, God, no. Oh, it was God. Progression Through Unlearning by Snapcase. No. It was every... Saint Anger. <laughs> yeah. it, it was every band in the Bay Area in the 90s whose drummer played with a piccolo snare. Yeah. Oh, God, the piccolo snare trend. What I'm so happy I didn't <laughs> fall like succumb to that nonsense. Oh, oh, there are great records, fantastic records that are destroyed. Destroyed by a piccolo yeah. snare. <laughs> <laughs> well like we had uh do you know andy patterson from sabrosa and from nope. re recording music he's the drummer for sabrosa but he also okay. he, he's got a studio in in salt lake city um he was in a band called iceburn or, he wasn't, he wasn't iceburn. in it yeah. no. but he he was involved with iceburn and they're re-releasing iceburn's whole catalog on southern lord and uh, andy was telling us how he has to go through the Heph hephaestus and like uh, reamp the snare through the has like select out and reamp the snare through the entire record because it's like the worst sounding <laughs> snare ever and he's hated it for 30 years or however, yeah. however long that record he's like been. i finally get to fix that snare <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i have mixed feelings about about doing that but you know in a lot of ways it's it's there's like that i'm sure is going to make just make it more listenable but like Dave Mustaine re-recording all the vocals on uh, Countdown to Extinction. It's like, dude, fuck you. What are you yeah. doing? Like, come on. He's like, I can sing better now, though. No, no yeah, you well, can't. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's 50-50 that it's going to be more listenable or it's going to be Greedo shot first. No, they shot, yeah. no, they shot at the same time. No, we need right. all the spaceships in the background. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so but I don't know. Yeah, that was like, that was an enjoyable no. minute of Let's of scoot forward a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, I'm going to. It's gonna, a long song. I'm going to to scoot into the middle and see let's see let's see the change the one third through change up i'm section. actually surprised because usually in a nine minute long song you don't get much action in that first minute it's yeah. usually yeah. like just noise or lead up oh i know oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i know what do you know about that <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go now we're like three and a half minutes in all right uh, okay oh real okay. vibe shift I need to know how we got there. <laughs> how did we get here? Oh. Okay. Now the bass, the bass is back. 
Oh, they're Come leaning on, into guys. this one, huh? Oh. a song within a song yeah I'll, I'll go back and listen to that whole thing to see where it where it starts and where it ends but no this is a lot of good elements in there based on that i'd keep listening yeah. i'll check yeah. out the whole album yeah what were we it listening ha- to it hasn't like that again like that felt like different kind of neurosis worship right that's like a little more steve von tilly kind of neurosis stuff but yeah it's good no, i don't mind it oh, i yeah. think i think we were actually booked to play a show with this band or, oh, or really? we were supposed to play with them when we were when we were supposed to go through phoenix oh. last year but huh. the name's familiar I, I i think i talked to them at some point but didn't ever listen to it so well there was that other source band well there's sorcia which is a similar kind of sludgy band up in seattle portland or seattle mm, yeah. okay yeah no, um that's, I, I like it i'm into it i'll check it out well, all right so let's play a game which one's the singer uh, ooh. <laughs> uh, uh the guy on the left i say yeah middle. i'm saying i'm saying burly left yeah i think, think it's the burly left guy it's like Brian Posehn and John Paul Davis from Conan had a baby and he <laughs> and he grew up. That guy, the guy on the far right, has real Rex from Pantera vibes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, he's the drummer. Well, we'll, we'll never know. The guy in the middle actually has kind of like maybe like Anselmo's weird older brother. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's Todd to... Anselmo. <laughs> Todd Anselmo. Used to sit on his chest and slap him. <laughs> <laughs> say uncle. Say uncle. <laughs> uncle. Yeah. Uncle. He like, you know, he shreds, but he also has like a union, like road work job. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, like, man, he... during the day, I'm out there fixing them cracks. And then at night, me and Zoss are just tearing it up. <laughs> Yeah, he push he pushes that roller over the over yeah, the exactly. pa- over the pavement. Yeah. Uh, all right. What's next? Okay, the next one is. Uh... Oh, oh, I was gonna say before before the next one. Uh, so I went on a shopping spree yesterday oh. at uh, Profound Lore. William Sonoma. No, not uh, yeah. not this time around. William Sonoma. No, on the Profound Lore re- uh, web shop, and uh, I just said fuck it i'm just gonna listen i'm just gonna listen to a little bit of every record from every band that's on here and i came across what was the one that we listened to yesterday that was like that kind of gothy it was like a straight goth rock oh, band cable or something or no it, was, no it was something about a mask but there's a few bands on profound lore that have that kind of oh yeah the mask that kind of gothy vibe yeah that, yeah. that his voice dropped into real quick there once that yeah once yeah that totally in that deep like uh, i like slayer but i also <laughs> like peter murphy yeah. <laughs> this is the volume at which i can hit all the notes i want to hear <laughs> <There you go. laughs> i still only have a five note range <laughs> Uh, what's next? Uh, Astro Death. Astro Death. Astro, Astro Death. Death. Okay. Yowzers. So, All right. So, he- so here's where we're gonna get we're gonna get real. You name your song "Relentless Brutality." Yeah. That's a fucking tall order. That is a tall. Yeah, order. I'll be the we'll, judge of that. Yeah, we'll yeah. play we'll play some records here that that possibly challenge that. Let's see, this looks it has a very uh, death metal-y sort of vibe Ooh, that's that like background here is whoo that is I, hard to look grind. at it's yeah a, it's like it's like grind but it's like cartoon grind they're like but i still want to be able to read the name of the band yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, i mean the like the little uh the, the album cover is you know like it's it's not entirely horrific i'm not sure about the dragons but like the skull <laughs> stuff like whatever they're kind of doing a cool thing with yeah. like this the the blood but the, the that, eyes are kind of that stuff around the outside Ooh, i do not like that yeah it's like carnage but a little too goofy yeah huh. sydney australia heavy sludge grunge oh, duo from sydney course. God damn it. Oh, of course <laughs> We found like a dozen, a, a dozen like uh, sludge and noise bands. There's like a there's like a sl- a sludge duo scene in Australia. And, um, oh, and well, we, they love that shit up there, you know. It's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I talked oh, over you, here. You guys, have you ever heard of like? Have you ever seen Daredevil with Ben Affleck? Oh, it's fantastic. It's like we did a whole we did a nice little concept album about Ben Affleck's Daredevil, and it's just like it's quite nice. 
but like we also throw elements of like dream girls with eddie murphy and beyonce <laughs> it's like it's my favorite so you know we're just doing that on this one <laughs> oh, oh shit oh uh, no yes. no Ooh, that is woo. i'm just look, i'm just looking through the rest of your album art so this is amazing uh amazing i, I have like, to say like this top. is that one is awful but i love it i love how awful it is like yeah, what the, is that a monkey it's, what? Like, it's like a monkey man yeah it's like vultures picking at a bigfoot maybe but then, he's, <laughs> but then he's got like a sweet leather wristband, maybe. I think those are his shackles. Oh, shackles! Yeah, there his we go. shackles. Yeah. And he's oh a... my God, there's a over here. There's a golden snitch from Harry Potter on the <laughs> right that, side of him. There's a golden snitch. Oh, I know what that is. That's an that's got to be an artist signature. Oh, those yeah, it's those clever be. artists those always clever. Uh, sneaking, yeah, sneaking their Iron, names the, in. the guy that did the Iron Maiden covers really allowed everyone to make a symbol <laughs> as their name, didn't he? <laughs> All right, there's one more to look at. Oh, okay. And then we'll then we'll listen to it. Oh, Ooh, what is that? We got. Ms. Oh Nos. yeah, this is the this is the one. Ooh. Oof. Oh shit! Yeah. What, oof, it's like oof, a oof. Another... space space Nazi dinosaur. I think. Space yeah. Nazi dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. This guy I... was probably in that space Nazis movie. And is that supposed Netflix. to be like DNA? Like helixes made of kind of looks bones? like it. Of gore, yeah, they're gore helixes. Gore helix. <laughs> I think he's got that trademarked. <laughs> All right. Oof, I do not like that one. Sorry, guys. I do not <laughs> like that one. All right. I, well, I, now that now that we've dug into the branding of this band, <laughs> what song? Did they want this song right here. Oh, just uh, the song is "Relentless Brutality." All right, here we go. All right, the All latest right. single from Astro, Astro Death. Death. <laughs> Relentless Brutality. interesting yeah it was i was I not I, I you could have given me a thousand guesses of what the vocals would sound like and that is not, not like what that I that was guessed. not it yeah, at all. yeah uh, that if, for opening riff it kind of it really especially as like an opening track again i hate to keep saying this but it really just sounded like that opening track on uh What's the mass Leviathan by Mastodon? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know it. Yeah. Well, uh, then also, also it falls into that. Like, I think there's a generation of artists that I feel like owe like some kind of royalty payments to Matt Pike for like for <laughs> like chord progressions and tone and play style you don't think that that uh, money should directly go to tony iomi probably yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, skip the middleman on that one yeah it's, it's like you know matt gets 10 cents tony gets 90 <laughs> uh, i guess i mean to be fair to matt pike like you know sleep of course is just sabbath worship i don't think anybody would dispute that but high on fire is high on fire is like, different it's a whole different thing yeah yeah and he i uh, mean and the, there's elements of that signature matt stuff in tony those like those vibrato chords and but Matt also went in different directions, especially in High on Fire. Totally. And I mean, I think, you know, obviously the other two in High on Fire really have to take a lot. I mean, that drummer especially has to take a lot of credit for that sound. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and this is a two piece. That's uh, that's interesting. So, I, yeah. so Astro Death, reach out to us. I definitely heard separate bass and guitar tracks in there so how do you do it uh -huh. you, i mean i've seen some i've seen some really creative two pieces pull off shit that i would have never expected oh, yeah. them to be able to pull off so i'm curious to see like how you which of that you play live or how you pull it off if, if you make it sound exactly like that yeah exactly from like i mean dude. once the once the vocals kicked in though it kind of you know it was like it was it was fine as it was going on and then once those vocals kicked in i actually found myself like my interest being peaked a little bit more because yeah. i was it was so out of left field like i've never really heard sacred reich but that's what i imagine the vocals sound <laughs> yeah. Like, sacred reich. <laughs> yeah like the vocals had that kind of like like a generic 90s alt rock 
vocal vibe. Oh, they call vocal themselves vibe. sludge grunge. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like I mean, that. I almost would have like late like or like early '90s like power metally kind of vocals too. Uh, I don't know. It, yeah, it it, oh. it it definitely added another layer. Where I was like, oh, I kind of see where this is going. Yeah, let's hear a little bit more. Yeah, let's listen to some more. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll dig into You'll this catalog. To that more? I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. I, I'm gonna give the vocals a not for me. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Like, after on that listen, it got a little. It, yeah, a little bit more grungy, kind of '90s and. It, yeah. So I don't know how many. Like if if you guys have a regular practice studio that's full of other bands. Um, oh, you know, you we, think we're actually a band? Oh, yeah. No, no. No. Oh, no, no, no. Or, or, or in your experience hanging out at, pra at practice studios, I mean, especially in the suburbs of, yeah. of, Sil of Silicon Valley, there's a certain type of, of dad band oh, yeah. that's like they were maybe in a band in the 80s, you know, like 90s. in kind of like a hair band or maybe like a hair to grunge band, and now they're like getting it back together. And totally they're gonna, they're gonna do their thing again but they're gonna modernize the sound but then the singer still kind of sounds like <laughs> <laughs> i yeah that that vibe is so fascinating to me uh, mostly like the fashion and, and i've tried to like articulate it and put it out into the world the fashion part of that vibe that you like the dad like x 80s hairband modernizing like i don't know who the the one shitty stylist is that's like taking these dildos to you know uh, the like affliction Mel store melrose yeah and being like <laughs> No, nope. all the jeans have to have pocket covers on the butt yeah. and and embroidery, you know, yeah. and, and we need flaming dice and flames on everything. And it, yeah, from that like, fake Western button up with like the, the sparkly shit on it and also absolutely. the embroidery. And like some like crazy black headband that's up here with like crazy goggles on it, you know, like that. <laughs> like, guys, wh who the, wh why the fuck isn't somebody just being like, hey. You know, there's really popular metal bands still. Let's look at what they're wearing. And you open it up and like the most popular metal bands that are current, none of them are wearing this bullshit. Like just, <laughs> just, just wear a black shirt and some, <laughs> that's some it, jeans. you know? And yeah. if you're like a little bit of a middle-aged tubbier guy, as we all are post 40, like just get your clothes that fit and just keep it simple and stop yep. trying to like the, the fashion thing. The, yeah. The affliction shirts, just like you said, it's, Ugh, the wigs, so just so, wigs. You know, ugh. So the listeners know we're not talking about Astro Death no, right now. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they yes. no nothing no. like that. Yeah, we're we're looking at the picture of them, and what I'm getting now is that that they're they're young, and this is like like nostalgic worship for the for yeah. the time that we lived through. Yeah, and exactly. like Nick Nikki Six should look at Astro Death's outfit right now and just be like, yeah. oh, that's and what go I gotta wear. Cool. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, skip the goatee. Sorry, Astro Death dude. I'm just not a fan of goatees. <laughs> hey, for some of us, it's all we can grow. <laughs> I mean, no one in particular. No one. In particular. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah, of course yeah, not. Yeah. Nice. No, I, I it's uh, that's a that's firmly in the knot for me. Really well done. Sounds great. Um, it's just I'm not their huh. I'm not their audience. I'm the opposite. I, I I'm totally gonna dig in and listen some more. All right, there you go. I, I never Can't saw Daredevil all. with Ben Affleck, so I'm yeah. gonna skip it too. <laughs> that was so. I, I I've been getting into. There's this one dude who posts YouTube videos where he like breaks down people's accents and how you like. He's a professional coach. He coaches okay. actors and helps them figure out accents, oh, really? and then does like like the scientific explanation of which things inside your mouth produce the different sounds. And oh, I watched weird. one about the difference between Australia and New Zealand because for, for, I didn't even know there was one. But now I can <laughs> oh, totally, there there totally, I can is. totally hear it. And the main reason I can hear it is because of the fucking popularity of the Flight of the Concords guys. Yeah. It's yeah. Taika Waititi's fault that I <laughs> that I now know how New Zealanders sound different from yeah Australia. Totally. I mean. Yeah, Flight of the Concords, and then like you know all the movies he made on it. Have you guys seen What We Do in the Shadows? I mean, that uh, oh yeah, like, like ten one times of the over. Funniest yeah. fucking movies I've seen <laughs> so in the last good. fifteen years. I mean, have, did you watch the series? 
I did. I didn't really, you know, the fear, the series to me felt a lot like the American office where like, I'm sure it's going to get a lot better, but in the first, you know, like five episodes, it's like, I kind of already saw this and it was a little better in the movie. And I, I from what I understand, it kind of took on its own life though already. It did. The psychic, it's all about the psychic vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The psychic oh yeah. Vampire. He's really funny. That was a good addition. <laughs> it's one of those things that I, I think I have it even recorded and I just haven't watched it yet. All right, so we have one we more. Have one more this round. We, uh, right, what do we got in, in this round? Uh, it's that new optimism. New optimism. Doctor Myho. Is this a band camp? So this is a band camp one. So okay. um, we also this one is not submitted. Uh, what we do is band camp writes a lot of really great articles, and they introduce people to new music or dig into. Uh, you know, discographies of other mus- musicians, um, regional scenes, regional scenes. I mean, the the writers at at Bandcamp are amazing, um, and the things they uncover. So this one kind of caught my attention because it was talking about Miho Hattori um, okay. and her genre having no genre. So Miho Hattori is one of the uh, members of Chibomato. Okay, who I got really into. I love Chibomato. Yeah, um, and so apparently, you know, she's had this prolific career. As a solo. outside as a solo artist um, and has done lots of different uh, different bands um, collaborated with people like the Beastie Boys and John Zorn um, oh, I want to hear that she one. is she is she's yeah. done like a ton of stuff and so this is one that she put out uh, fairly recently and uh, is sort of described as like a dreamy hip-hop and pop inspired Caribbean uh, which sounds really hey, interesting. That went places. But I, I, I kind of wanted to hear what you know, uh, having no genre sounds like. What is what is what is no genre? <laughs> is it so? All, or is it all genres? Is it all genres? Exactly. It's, it's like, is no genre all genres? Yeah. Well, that's just the black yeah, and white. Like, that's black and white is discussion. Black a color, or is black the yeah, absence of color? Like, exactly. what are we doing? So, Doctor Myho is the song I want to listen to. All right. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Come in, I'm Dr. Myho. Special raising the art of flow. You got allergy for the beam on the ring. I'm the king on the ring. You're a sign, you're a name. Please sit down. I'm Dr. Myho. I was sick, maybe here. I don't care. I'm square, I'm a fair. I'm square. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know I, if it has I like an... those beats, uh, personally. I, I kind of like that sound. Um, apparently, she created this when she was a, in residence at a Brooklyn art space called Pioneer Works. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I don't... Uh, the, yeah, the first the first section and the fucking air horn. Jeez. What was the air horn? horn? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a bold choice. And so, I, super bold. <laughs> not sure I'm, I'm on board with that one. I guess if you wrote it in Brooklyn, though, there's a lot of garbage air horns going on. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. But once it shifted into that like more chorusy or maybe it was like a pre-chorus, like trip hoppy, yeah. Ibiza kind of vibe, I, I, yeah. I liked that a little bit more. The the first part, it certainly didn't feel genre It felt like very modern kind of you know pop yeah when i walk into the lobby the all white and glass lobby of a fancy hotel and that's playing in the background i don't bat an eye no. <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah that yeah hotel that lobby is... that's your genre yep <laughs> modern hotel, hotel lobby hip hotel lobby <laughs> uh, but it was listening. you know it seems... uh, yeah well, what I was going to say was the air horn could go two ways, right? So she's locked in a studio playing. She she doesn't know pop culture. She finds that somewhere, and she's like, ooh, that's, ooh, cool. that's cool. That's a cool sample. I'll throw that in there. <laughs> or some asshole producer's like, you know what would be really great right here? Look, I'm, like he, he like bet his friend. We're going to get an air horn We're going to get, get it on there. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, that sounds good. 
Or maybe she has like a tween in her life who's just bored at the studio. With their, their like smartphone and they have that stupid app. Where they're like, <laughs> and thinks it's hilarious. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that's that seems to me now the most obvious because she probably if she does have kids, they're probably about that age. And that's something yeah. my, kids, my kids would for sure do. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised exactly. they haven't. They're here while we're recording. I'm surprised they've never busted in and been like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because they think what you do is stupid and irrelevant and want no, to they do really it at this age, on. right? No, they don't because they all want to be streamers and YouTubers and shit. Ah, and so to, to them, we're like in here with lights and microphones and a green screen doing shit that they want to do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like, Come on. Yeah. Oh, but my, my 13 year old is like going to start a twitch account and start yeah. and i told her i'd get her i told her i'd get her set up to stream because all they just play games and laugh and tell stupid jokes and i, I have a feeling somebody right. would probably watch <laughs> somebody it you would pay to listen <laughs> yeah. oh, i mean i have no idea what twitch is but that i mean it's I like know. people play video games and talk while they're doing it is that yeah you just you live stream yourself doing anything and then basically people can subscribe to you and become like paid patrons well how are all of these musicians and djs and stuff doing twitch live streams over a video game platform that's it's not a video game platform. It's just a stream. Oh. It's just a streaming platform. It was just that the first people that streamed on it a bunch were were gamers. Oh. Yeah, it's, you sc you screen share. It'll share whatever. It'll stream whatever you do. So if you're do Matt could do DJ sets gotcha. or yeah, you could stream anything on it. Uh, okay. Yeah, I it, always thought it was a video game. Well, I think for for all of the platforms that are out there right now, I think it's the easiest to get started on and actually make some money. So mm. like, it's hard to get on YouTube and build up enough of a following to actually get a little scratch. But since there's like a paid sub model for individuals, if gotcha. you want to, it's like Patreon. It's like Patreon streaming platform. You like your buddy, you give him two bucks a month or whatever, yeah. and you watch his dumb streams. Sweet. And, and then, <laughs> I mean, I swear to God, since they started watching it in the last like year, year and a half, there's like a whole new vocabulary in my house that because my older daughter watches too. Yeah. And they just have, sh you know, shorthand and language for everything that's going on. I don't even know what they're talking about half the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, out of touch I don't, with the kids I don't these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I seriously, up until this moment right now, I thought Twitch was just for people to like watch other people play video games. That's yeah. what I thought. That, that, are, that is still the top. That's like their top, the, the yeah. top streamers. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, so oh. if I wanted to start a Twitch of just me taking a bath with my video game system that I put in the bathtub, like that's ah. possible, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Yes. good to know. I, I, and how did, how did that come into being again? I, I've seen all those posts. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I kind of told the story and it's pretty simple. Like I'm, <laughs> <laughs> just that stupid and and impulsive that like when i had a, i have a three-year-old and when i had her i stopped playing video games like i was like okay i'm done with this and i really only ever played video game soccer because i'm obsessed with soccer so like that's the only game i ever played but i would like play online and shit and you know i i played it but i had the kid and i was like okay video games are done i'm done and i put it away and um I recently, I'm living on my own now. I went through a separation and all that. So I'm living in my own place and, you know, I'm locked down. And like, I had the video game system. I was like, you know what? Let's turn it on. Let's let's rekindle the old fire. Well, let's see what happens. I turned it on and within like 20 minutes, I started feeling that addictive draw <laughs> to the machine again, you know, and just like, you know, it was just a few minutes of playing it. I wasn't even playing online. I was just playing against like the computer. And I just started feeling myself like, getting into it and i was like <gasps> and i jumped up and i fucking grabbed it <laughs> out of the, the hutch and i just unplugged everything and i ran to the bathroom and i threw it in the tub and turned the water on <laughs> and in that moment i was just like you i'm free have to die. this fucking thing has to die i will never go down this road again because i felt it it was like you know an alcoholic like it's like i could just have a beer and then you have that yeah. beer and you're just like <laughs> yeah. uh, you know it was that i was just like oh no this is an addictive thing in my life this is a negative presence and i destroyed it so but then i was like after my impulse and my adrenaline like mellowed i was like wait i just threw this like piece of electronics in the bathtub and now it's filled with water sitting in my tub <laughs> it's probably got like lead and heavy metals in it like fuck. <laughs> so i i i i let all the water out and I let it drain and I like went to bed the next day I woke up and like it was still just sitting in my tub and had like I picked it up and it was still dripping water and I was like what am I gonna do with this thing but I need to take a shower so I just took a shower with it I was just like got in the shower and took a shower and it was still just in there and the next day 
I was like, oh, it's still wet. And I was like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. So it literally days passed and it was just sitting in my tub and I took many showers with it. And I was talking to a friend and I was like, yeah, I've got this. I destroyed this PlayStation. It's in my tub. And they were like, that's ridiculous. You're taking a shower with a PlayStation every day. And I was like, yeah, it's this weird thing. And they were like, well, why don't you like, why don't you post about this is ridiculous. It's really weird. And in my mind, I was like, it wasn't weird at all. I just like, I wanted to kill this thing. And then I was taking a shower with it, but they encouraged me to, to share it. And after, after a minute, I was like, yeah, this is yeah, of course. pretty ridiculous. And so I did that, but I will tell you the amount of abuse I got from grown men who love video games oh. was insane. I mean, I have direct messages of people being like, you're a self-righteous piece of shit. You're an elitist. What is like, how you're so wasteful. Not all of us can be this rich musician who can just do whatever you want. Like, why didn't you give it to a kid? Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. First why didn't you <laughs> donate like, it? Second. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, I, and I like made a point to respond to all of them and like defend myself. And like some of them, it's funny, like when you when you write back as the account to somebody who's giving that kind of abuse, some people would be like, oh, you know, OK, I get it. And like and then transition into being like, so, man, hey, I love your music. Like, blah, blah, blah. and I'm just like, no, we're in a fight. We're not. Yeah, no. You can't be pals with me now. But then other people were just like, <laughs> you know fuck you, you're a piece of shit, I'm blocking you. And like, it, it, it was really like the most abuse I've, even more so than the at the gates thing. People were so angry that I destroyed a PlayStation that I just had to keep going. And like, I posted pictures of me taking a bubble bath with it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually was, I like, I, I made, I was gonna do one with my kid in the bath with it. And I actually opened up the machine and took all the electronics out. So it was just a plastic shell and like did the kid bath photo. But I was like, no, this one's too, this one's too <laughs> weird. A little it's too, too far. Weird. And plus I don't want to like put pictures of my well, kid. Well, I mean, it was, it was, it was like that. I mean, that a lot of those, that those pictures and then a lot of the stuff that you post on the old man gloom page is like, Fuck, I got to reach out to Santos, man. We need him on the podcast because he's fucking hilarious. Like, uh, thanks. So, I mean, you know, go ahead. So was it a PS4? Yeah, it was a PS4. So did all the anger die down now because they've all moved on? You want to you wanna piss some people off? Get your hands on a, on a PS5. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, this was only like, this was like four weeks ago. This wasn't oh, even really? that long ago. So the yeah. PS5, that was the other thing. I was like, isn't the PS5 out? Isn't this an outmoded yeah, you, piece of technology? Like, what, it, what the fuck? It is. And you, but you can't get a PS5, which is why doing it with a PS5 would be even better. <laughs> Okay, so if anybody wants to send me a, a hollowed out broken PS5, I will fucking torture oh, gamers. Because you, you've already got them frothed up, so now they're coming oh, yeah. back. What's he gonna What's he gonna do next? That asshole. I mean, I understand like the whole GamerGate now. Like, I I, I mean, oh, yeah. my little armchair analysis theory is that like. I think that people who are really addicted to video games know that it's not good. Know that it's like. It's like, you know, when I'm drinking, when I drink too much, I know like I shouldn't have done that, but I did it, you know, and like yeah. I do it occasionally. But like, I think people who are deep into video games know that they probably should be doing something more productive. And I think there's like uh, overcorrection justification of their video game yeah, love, for sure. you know? And like, I think that translates into, you know, like the exclusivity of you aren't one of us unless you are in it with us. And I don't know, it was- oh. it, Oh my God! I have so many ideas. Oh, if you just want to keep, if, if you just want to keep going Please. at those go, those guys, so they're like the latest generation of the Nvidia video card for PC video games is out, and it's like amazing, blowing people's minds. Also, impossible to get. Oh, we gotta get, we gotta get our hands just on whatever it is, the All seventy right. sixty or whatever the latest <laughs> Nvidia card is. I don't know because like such a because then you're not just targeting gamers, which are one thing. You're targeting PC gamers, which are like the worst. Of, of the worst of, of the all worst. of all of it <laughs> like pe people who take the time to like build their own machine from the ground oh, up and yeah. spend you know spend seven grand and have liquid cooling on the cpu and shit <laughs> and then you just take a bubble bath with their goddamn video card that they're just like oh, they can't love have it they're the ones oh, that have I the chairs love that. with the dual joysticks oh yeah <laughs> three mo three monitor setup <laughs> three monitors yeah. and then like you know five years later they're really into cars with loud mufflers right yeah. and like neon underneath <laughs> Like exactly. that's, it's that just that, oh God, that whole thing, that external, like identifying yourself through the shit that you're into instead of who you are is just one other thing that I'm just like, oh. what, are you, what are you talking about? How many days in a row have you worn a band shirt, JD? Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. I don't know what you're talking about. 4,000. Like being yeah. a fan of music is like one thing, but like being, 
like we all had that friend who was uh, a crust punk and that he was like the biggest crust punk. And then he was into bikes. So he was like the bike guy. And all he talked about is like expensive Italian bike parts. Yeah. And then he became like a motorcycle guy and a, that weird appropriation of biker culture where it was but like- just cafe racers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, then, but then he grew a beard and he's only into choppers and yeah. like fun biker racism. Like not real racism, just like fun biker just racism. Fun racism. Yeah, he, like, you know. Did and then skip? now he has swastika tattoos and he wants to like take back the swastika because it's like more Navajo and and like Buddhist yeah. and we should take that like you we know these people back. who have no fucking personality but they only identify through whatever thing they're doing at that time like that's yes. that's what I'm more talking about yeah for yes. sure for sure and there are people like that in the metal scene too oh yeah, oh, fuck oh, yeah. Plenty. Oh, although yeah. this fictitious person we were just talking about he never had a Vespa or like an Italian moped face. Oh, <laughs> sure. You please. skipped right he over was that. Into ska. Oh, he was into Scott in the 90s. He's got a checkered oh, yeah. past for sure. Yeah, checkered past. <laughs> if, if... <laughs> All right, that's that's a winner. Boop, that was good. Uh, <laughs> he he was, sneers at people who ride bikes that have brakes on them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, just did a, I just did a movie with Oscar Isaacs, or it was a miniseries, <gasps> and the big thing about Oscar Isaacs was that he was in a ska band. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like everybody I, on set was pulling up pictures of him in his ska band oh really like, <laughs> oh my god oh he's yeah. that's incredible and so and 100 percent believable like what does he yeah. play what did he play oh my god uh, has... i don't know actually i he might have played like bass or something but Ugh. i'm not sure bass, bass players bass players Fuck em. <laughs> i want video of oscar isaac skanking please if anyone yeah. if anyone can dig that up I was in the bathroom one day and he can like I was pooping and he can like I saw him come in and I saw his wardrobe shoes and like sit down on the toilet. I was like, man, I'm pooping next to Duke Leto Atreides. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, he's great. Oh, shit. He's great. I'd love to poop next to him. Too. I'd love to poop next to him. <laughs> did you did you did you strike up a little conversation? A little awkward. I just did the thing where I talk. reach under and like tap yeah. on the stall <laughs> to see if to see if he was game. You know, to just see if he was interested. No, no. tap came back. You got, so no. I let it go. No return tap. Oh shit. Uh, Oh, I man. am excited about that new Dune movie, and I think he's probably. I mean. Yeah, oh my god! I can't he's wait. A, yeah, I hope he doesn't. Yeah, I think he's going to be a good Duke. But. Yeah, the previews look incredible. I. Oh man, oh, yeah. the casting of of Zendaya as Chani, like. I feel like when I read that book, when I was, you know, in my early twenties or whatever, like I saw Zendaya as Chani in my head. Like, yeah, that's the perfect casting. It's cr it's crazy good. Yeah, she's she's fascinating because she can like you could literally cast her as almost anything, and she could just morph into it. Like like if you if you need like you know not Tilda Swinton. To, for your part, although, <laughs> although although she might have been a better ancient one too, um, yeah, maybe but, but not till the, until this win, and then but then you just expect her to be kind of shitty and in, entitled, and she doesn't. I mean, I don't know her, but yeah, I've seen, never you could get her, a so. you can get a sniff from listening to people get interviewed and stuff, and yeah. she just seems like fucking normal. She was another Disney, yeah, person, she was, wasn't? yeah, she yeah. was yeah. a Disney kid. Yeah, I didn't really get it at first. I I didn't get the hype at first, but now I like if you know I've seen a few things and I'm I, I think. She She's great. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, I, Timothy Chalamet is Paul Mob Dib, and in, in he, um, I don't know. Yeah, he's like a little too much like drama Laguardia kid, you know. Like there's <laughs> just some there's like that drama kid phoniness about him, where it's like faux humble gratefulness, and I don't know. There's a, I'm being he's like a 20 year, he's a goddamn child. Yeah, why am yeah, I being so mean? Yeah, but I'm exactly. just like he's the one. I'm like mm, I'm not sure about that guy. Oh, I'm waiting for Jason Momoa and fucking Batista. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Jason Momoa is like Gurney Halleck, right? Is that? Yeah. Oh yes. God, that's that's great. Oh man. Well, speaking of Dune, speaking no. of <laughs> what I went. I have, uh, what? Oh, you have a merch. Stuff. Oh, I was gonna say we. It's, oh. I think it's time to visit the merch table. Yeah, Let's I went, do it. So I've got some good I, shit. I nice. went to a nerdy. I went to a nerdy high school in senior year. We had a science fiction. Um, uh, English class. It was just all mm -hmm. classic science fiction, and we had a dune, we had a Dune trial that was like the big was like the big event of the year it was so much fun like our teacher was a lunatic he was also the like director for all the theater so he loved like incorporating <laughs> drama and role playing and shit so we just had That's this awesome. week-long trial it was, wow. it was fun nice nice so have you been bu buying stuff picking stuff up during the, i i have i've been well times? i've been buying some t-shirts because like now with instagram people are like just bootlegging all the cool old like 
shirts you had when you were a kid but there's one uh Dooms doomsday collective and uh i got this sweet danzig with a kitty cat oh, no. oh my shirt, god which i'm pretty <laughs> excited amazing. about Fuck. just got that in the mail the other day um and the other good merch i got a i got a little bundle from doomsday my, my good collective, friend aaron yes. turner and he sent me some great records but the one thing i wanted to share with everybody that aaron sent me was just a little like this is what it's like to be friends with Aaron and Faith. They <laughs> sent me this as a present for my daughter, and um, what is it? Is, is that a this Kendall? is two Kendalls <laughs> torsos glued together <laughs> with like weird cult smocks. So there's there's the white guy, and then you flip him and. <laughs> This guy's got like a weird. This is what they oh sent God. me as a like as what? a gift for no my kid. No explanation. No explanation Just at all. Have at it. So Don't. if 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 you guys are wondering what it's like to be friends with Aaron Turner and Faith, I uh, am now. Kolichia, yeah. This is what it's like. Oh my God. It's just as fucking weird as you think it is. So can you so, please, whether you post it or not, can you please? The has your kid seen that yet? Uh, she has, and she, okay. I did, did, you her, film, and did you film? Did you film? I did. Response? I was like, I okay, want to. I want to. I want a response video to send to Aaron and Faith, and she just got it. She's just like three. And like, she kind of put it down. I was set like, it down. Oh, I'm not sending that to anybody. That's not that fun. Well, there's like something just kind of vaguely unsettling about that. It's, it's like really weird. I mean, the homemade smocks is the weirdest <laughs> part. Like somebody took the time to make this dude like a weird little muslin poncho. This is. Oh my god. It's insane. <laughs> oh, all right. well, that's so amazing. that's one. Uh, he sent me a couple other records, but yeah, like you know, uh, I want to be on Aaron see. Turner's Secret Santa list. <laughs> like, <laughs> may you be held. I don't know if you guys are into the sumac, but oh yeah, uh, yes, of I course. love this album. Nice. And he was gonna send me the Pharaoh Overlord record. Have you guys listened to Pharaoh Overlord yet? No, I haven't. No, that's gonna be maybe that's a different segment. Uh, the what we're listening to, but uh, yeah, that Pharaoh Overlord record. It's really shit, good. It is. It's weird. We'll just call that the segment. That's what that's what he's listening to. Fer Pharaoh Overlord. Pharaoh Overlord. Get your hands on it. <laughs> yeah, please, it's like weird, uh, almost like dance music with Aaron screaming over it. <laughs> oh wow! All right, all right. It's we gotta dig fucking, into that. It's Pharaoh it's like Overlord. '80s synth pop with Aaron doing like sumac vocals over it oh wow okay yeah and it's a it's a collaboration with a bunch of the guys that are in circle i don't know if you guys have ever listened to circle but um yeah it is very weird stuff it's got a big cobra on the cover yeah uh did Fair you guys bring some merch oh yeah, yeah what'd, you, what'd you buy what did i get so yesterday we went to the record store oh we yesterday. went record shopping together oh, nice. out of house so i grabbed uh fugazi recently reissued their entire collection so nice had to grab some fugazi for myself absolutely one of my favorites um and then also found uh from my hometown originally uh eagle twin so eagle twin familiar. a Are band from salt lake it's uh i think this was a southern lord yeah southern lord um and it's uh it's a two-piece gentry densley and tyler Oh yeah, that's right. Because Gentry and Greg are friends, right? That's, yeah. That's why all the Iceburn stuff is going. Yeah, the Sunburn to Southern Lord. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, Iceburn and Sun, they did they collaborate? So they, like, recorded something. Uh, it together? was Greg. So Gentry and Greg uh, did an did an album. They did a band together called Ascend, um, and he I think Gentry collaborated on some Sun stuff. Uh, but yeah, they've done oh, a but, lot together. But when we were interviewing Andy, he's like, "But they totally missed the boat." Of course, they needed to to name the band Sunburn. Sunburn. Yeah, what Iceburn a missed opportunity! Oh, yeah, so I mean, there He's has like, to be like so ten thousand Sunburn bands, but you just throw the V in there as the U, yeah. and then you're good, right? Uh, two, and exactly. two, two exactly. ends. Exactly. Throw the V. S U N N. I think that's the yeah. Other oh ones. yeah, there you go. Sunburn. Speaking of the V, uh, so Dune put out a new album. I don't know if you're familiar with Dune. I'm not familiar with Dune at all. Dune is fucking incredible yeah. just like kind of a next generation mastodon from yeah england. from england um just really really good rich complex songwriting great tones yeah it we just got that was it 2017 yeah they played psycho, psycho. Oh, okay. uh one of the one of the years that we went and evan who runs psycho is their mm -hmm. manager oh cool so, yeah, yeah there's really been good. a lot of psycho talk this week yeah uh, what, what's the what's the word what's the talk we got yeah, an email from to... Psycho this week that it's going forward and restrictions oh, wow. are lifting in Nevada. And 
you know, I mean, on one hand, we're all talking about it and I'm like, I don't know if this is going to happen, but like, we hope it's going to happen, but obviously we're all still kind of nervous. Like, can this happen safely? Yeah. But then there's also another layer for me. Like we all want to do it. We can't wait. And also the, the, the prospect of playing the first night of the, you know, I think we're I mean, headlining insane. the pool oh party. God. The first night explode. of the first fest to go forward. And oh. it's at the pool. It's going to be, in, it's going to be fucking crazy. Be insane. Yeah. So that would be really exciting. But I'm, you know, we're all a little nervous. And like, I was thinking like, how the fuck are all these European bands or not even your, like just these other international bands going to get in? Like, I mean, not to pigeonhole emperor. I don't really know anything about them, but <laughs> in my yeah. mind, those guys are like, no, oomph, I don't want the, the nanobots in my skin, so <laughs> yeah, they are not yeah. coming. They're not German, but I can't really do a Norwegian yeah, oh. accent. So there like, will be know, I, a lot of these like super black metal and just metal dudes. Like, I can't imagine they're on the ball getting the vaccine enough to like fly and get visas. And I don't know who I'm pigeonholing, but you know, it just seems very unlikely that the full lineup will be there. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, even in the best of times, he's got problems getting people over the, totally. over the yeah. pond. <laughs> and, I mean, shit. there's always some band and, that has a visa issue. <laughs> so we didn't, we didn't go in 2019, but we went in 17 and 18 and in 18 fucking, it fell apart essentially. Like, who was it? That was one of the headliners that just bailed at the last minute. They sort of oh. like told, told us yeah i i made fun of that i don't know i mean this is yeah. like this was i totally santos that whole situation because there was like a back and forth i don't remember what fucking band was but it, they were like no psycho blew it and psycho like like no like, they blew no, it i'll show you all it. the correspondences and it was that was yeah. and there was another yeah. there was another fest where that was happening where like Oh, Manowar was the Manowar thing. It just happened where like Manowar refused to play because they didn't want the decibel limit. And the fest was like, they knew and Manowar was like, we didn't. And so I made up this whole thing basically being like, we can't play psycho because Donald Trump won't let, like he wants to deport me. Like basically I like played the Donald Trump Mexican card and said that like Aaron and I were going to get deported because we were from New Mexico. So we were canceling. And again, people just believed it and were like, you guys are fucking bullshit. Like you guys are Americans. This is, un this is and I'm like, guys, it's not fucking real. It's uh, it was witchcraft. Witchcraft, right. There was witchcraft. There was a witchcraft. And then we remember we were promised when they do finally tour in the U.S., we're going to get tickets to if if they play in our town. Oh, I never heard another word about oh, that. I don't oh, remember yeah, that, that. That was in one of the emails, I remember. And they weren't yeah, the only one to fall out. They weren't that was the same one where Big Business had problems. Big Business pulled out at the last minute because they had issues with the stage crew. Oh, that's right. And then they, oh. they ended up playing, but they ended up playing the small stage indoors like that night. Vinyl after yeah. the headliner finished in the yeah. big room. Yeah, and we talked well, to we talked to cody about that no they they were trying to set up uh, by the pool cody said they were just like the stage guy was just being a total fucking dick and telling them what they that they couldn't do all the stuff that it had already been agreed that they could do and what gear they could use and he's like look if you keep doing this we're just gonna walk yeah and the and they didn't they tried to escalate it beyond the stage manager and and it just didn't go anywhere so they just left yeah wow we, like, we went them, we, I mean. we went yeah. and sat down in um nobu and he was sitting at the bar by himself, just eat, just eating. And I was like, "Should we go bug him about it? I want to hear the story." I but then hear the story. <laughs> but then we ended up um, running a show that they played here in San Jose, and he told it. I we asked him about it, and he told us the whole story. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, Oranzi Panzuzu also dropped. Maybe they mm -hmm. uh, they dropped out the next year, twenty nineteen. I think twenty nineteen. Yeah. I think it's, it was a visa. Uh, who knows? There's it's, always visa issues. It, it's such a hard. I mean, having pulled off. No, nothing even on the scale of this or half of this or a quarter of this the coordination is so fucking challenging oh yeah and i know yeah. because i know people who are in, involved with evan he runs it with a real small team like it's a tiny little skeleton yeah. crew have you, you so you haven't played there as an artist yet right that was... yeah we played twice we oh, played, played twice. psycho okay. we played psycho california the first one and right. then we did vegas last year so we were the we were the first band i mean that was like dream making shit where like you know the, the headliner was supposed to be megadeth and we were the first band on the main stage that day so it was like megadeth was the headliner and carcass and i don't remember who else played but like i was carcass obsessed as a kid that was my band yeah so i was like holy shit 
we're playing on the same stage as Carcass on the same day, like right before Carcass. And then Megadeth, who is Aaron's favorite, he's like loves Megadeth. So it was like Aaron and I were like, whole, you know, we were texting these, you know, saccharin, like, can't believe what we've created and we're playing with <laughs> Megadeth and Carcass now. But then Dave got cancer and Dave, they dropped out. They and dropped. They replaced Megadeth with the Misfits reunion with Dan. Yep. And obviously, you guys know I'm dancing. So I was just like, I'm fucking playing. Uh, like I'm of one, the first of five <laughs> bands playing with Carcass and the Misfits with Danzig singing. Like it was, it, it was like a full circle completion of like everything I'd ever like, you know, wanted to do. So it was pretty That's cool. awesome. Yeah. I've, I haven't heard reports back from last year. Last year was the first year I was at Mandalay Bay, but there were always. Oh, no, problems. they've done two. Have they done two there? Yeah. They've done two Vegas. Well, no, they, but they've done a bunch of Vegas, but they switched. Oh, from you're the right, hard, the Hard Rock, hard rock, rock to Mandalay yeah, Bay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yes. And and you know, and now it's it's part of a much larger company. He he always ran it like there wasn't enough stage crew, there wasn't enough backline gear. Like when you really got into it, at the the first the two that I went to at at Vegas, like there were all kinds of problems. Yeah, the bands had lots of complaints, but when you once you invite. Megadeth and folks like that, you gotta you gotta have your shit together <laughs> yeah, backstage. Totally. So I'm wondering if maybe they had fewer problems at at uh, at Mandalay Bay. I mean, for us, it was it was smooth. so smooth. Everything yeah. was smooth. The check in, the the you know the the transportation, the food. It was like it was awesome. It was really great. I mean, it's fucking weird. I mean, as you guys know, you've been. It's so weird. You're like walking through, and there'll be like a bunch of you know battle vest dudes with like you know just like playing <laughs> slot machines but then like they're still just like you know 85 year old grannies smoking like virginia slims hitting the slots and like yeah it's bizarre I, I wanted to see that because at hard rock it's much more of like a hotel takeover like yeah there yeah. were other people there but not really just sort of but mandalay bay and that whole complex is so much bigger and so much less isolated than the hard rock that you're going to end up with just yeah. plenty of regular folks mixed in too. So I was well, curious. And to the see hard how rock is like off the strip a little bit or it was, yeah. but yeah, Mandalay is. Bay is like a part of like, you don't yeah. even have to leave. You don't have to go outside to walk the strip anymore. It's like to they're go all to just Lux. Yeah. fucking connected. Yeah. So connected, yeah, it was, yeah, it was weird. And like just attending and like trying to go see bands, you know, it's the, the resort is so huge that you think you're just going to like pop over, but you're, you're like, I, got, I was getting lost all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's, kinda... that, that place is a bit of a maze. I've, I've stayed there for work, unfortunately, like probably many times, 40 times. So yeah. I, I know the, I know Mandalay Bay easy, but it's not, stuff's not as close together. That was the really cool thing about the hard rock is the main stage, the joint, you walk out and like 20 feet, is the entrance to the vinyl stage to the vinyl stage yeah it's yeah. like it's like, thir it's like well, you could pop back and forth and we did a ton because we there would be overlapping sets that you wanted to catch some of both probably a bit harder at mandalay bay to do that yeah the like the sort of mid-size venue and then the pool the outside pool venue it's a it's like a good a you know, 15 minute walk you know oh, like re like tunnels and really trying to find it and yeah did you stay for the whole thing did you stay for the whole thing we we didn't rehearse before we played, so we went a day <laughs> early and got a rehearsal space uh, to like practice. I mean, that's like that's what we do. We just practice once or twice before we play, uh, and before we record records too. We just kind of this is why you say you're not really a band. <laughs> nope, we are definitely not a normal band. That's um, so we went a day early and like rehearsed and everything, but um, we left the day after because we had a show in Denver the night after we played, which was. It was weird. It was like a pretty sparsely attended Denver show, which is it, it was our first show in Denver ever. And it was it was a little strange. I was like, what? Like, we've never played here before. And we were playing a pretty small venue. and It was pretty empty. And, I, and the consensus was like, yeah, because everybody's at Psycho. Everyone's like Denver Psycho. is very close to Vegas. And like the hugest fest is going on, uh, you know, hour and a half plane ride away. Of course, yeah. everybody's there. So anyway, did you did you get to catch anybody at that stage that's like kind of right in the middle of the casino, like open to the rest of the casino? No, I, all of that was happening kind of after hours, and yeah, and I'm old and tired. Two so. minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, that's where yeah, they did two the, minutes. Two minutes did there. We, yeah, because they, they didn't do it on our night, so I missed them. But I think Andrew WK did like a DJ slash solo set there, yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, I 
when I'm at that hotel, it's because I'm at a conference and they have a huge convention center that's even yeah. beyond where you, you know, what you saw that's fucking gigantic. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that I, I wanted to see that so bad because that's like where the cover bands play at night and like right. all the dr- all the drunk convention goers, like, all the old ladies going dance it, because it's in tech. It's like five guys and then one girl just like <laughs> trying to. <laughs> Trying to, trying to night at the Roxbury. <laughs> yeah, <much>. exactly. <laughs> I just like so in my and, and I've been there so many times in my head. That's what that place is. Yeah. So I I yeah. really wanted to see something different there. Well, uh, I was actually going to make a joke about like oh so you know kind of just like a metal show five guys and <laughs> or maybe, but it's more like thirty five guys. guys and yeah, one thirty five guys and yeah. one. Although you know it's a lot better these days. It's especially Psycho. I felt like it was yeah. you know oh, not fifty sure. fifty but like maybe. 65 35 i don't know it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool to see the gender you know sort of spread out in metal yeah and it is it is kind of i mean psycho is not really a genre specific festival anymore it's sort of the psycho california is what kind of more of the stoner doom oh yeah psycho is now much broader than that but he does like blonde redhead and bin. he does (laughs) seem to pull from sub genres or other genres that are much more diverse in terms of male male, female or race or whatever yeah which which is good i mean we've we've i've told the story a million times about the the first year we were in Vegas and there was a there was like a um a glamour ball the same night Saturday night at Psycho. So the hard rock was a bunch of drag queens and then the entire psycho and then the entire psycho fest crowd and it was just like the most harmonious, happy That's night. Awesome. Of no, it completely worked. Yeah, it, it totally worked. That, yeah, it's great. Everybody's hanging yeah, out. I together, mean, yeah, I mean are you guys planning on going this year? If it happens. I, w- I would love for Psycho to be my first show back. Yeah, and everyone's just, were vaccinated oh. and yeah. It's um it's a weird know, though. It's a weird time. Like even if everything Oh, you don't per- say. <laughs> yeah. No, no, specifically. <laughs> if everything's perfect and we were not worried or very minimally worried about the health stuff, it it always falls on the first week when our kids go back to school. Yeah. And it's like and it starts in the middle of the week like the day they start school. Right. And the kids that haven't been in school now for a year and a half. So I kind of feel like it's not, hard. Uh, no, no, not going to be a good time to absolutely go. <laughs> love to though yeah maybe we'll maybe sneak out and see friday and saturday or something i don't know we'll see yeah, yeah. i mean i guess as it as it kind of pushes forward and you know it looks like it's going to go ahead or not go ahead I, I mean i'm i'm going to get the vaccine as soon as i can i have no yeah. issues with it of course 100%. but um i'm 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 totally going to stay the whole weekend just fucking yeah you guys are headlining the pool party, right? On Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a perfect slot because then the fest just starts as soon as you finish and you just put yeah, it and I mean, you just get to hang out. You just get to hang, man. I mean, you know, uh, Jordan in two minutes, I think, are, are going to do it. And, you know, I told him I would do stuff with them if they oh, – nice. mostly just to, like, have an excuse and try to get Evan to keep me in a hotel room for free for the whole yeah. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he yeah. will. you and Ben can just share drum duty. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Fine by me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, you know, uh, that whole thing, the cover thing has also been like huge. Yeah, you've done me sane. You've done a few of those, right? We had Jordan yeah, on a couple weeks ago. Four or five. I, I think I did, I think I did four. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I mean, it was great, like total distraction. And he's, he's doing, nobody is coming close to what he's doing. I mean, I know a lot of people are no. trying to do those videos and I see others and I'm like, Mm-mm. you just yeah, don't no. get it you don't get it. and like some of them have very like super high profile musicians but they just don't they don't have it you know yeah. they don't have the thing that he's got oh he's got it yeah for sure yeah I, I was really glad he came on and and talked a bit just because i've been i've been a fan for a long time and i love his sort of blend of comedy and and music and uh and then just watching someone just like make something out of nothing yeah, he just he just he just willed this empire, you know, this rapidly growing empire into existence because totally because of stuff that he loved. It's uh, yeah, it's cool and to I will see. say as like one of the musicians who did it, like he pays us, and it's yeah. it's not bad, you know. Like we get a little bit of money from each one, and it's like when they come in, I'm like this this helps, you know. This is and he's uh, he he truly is doing it to help out musicians and to yeah. just like keep content coming out, and that's like. That's the most valuable thing to me, you know, like 
somebody who just does shit, who doesn't just yeah. talk about shit, but they do it. And Jordan is such a doer. Yeah. So whenever he asked me to do something, I'm just like, yeah, hundred yep. percent. To, to me, that's the same. You have, you have a version of that impulse, but writing that, writing that blog or taking, you know, putting yeah. the, the thing in the bathtub and taking, <laughs> that, that took a little pushing, but <laughs> yeah. just fucking do it. Why not? What else are you doing? Right? Just yeah. Write, and write, like, write, I mean, for me, like uh, Old Man Gloom, especially is like all of when I joined Old Man Gloom in 99, it was me and Aaron, right? Of course, and Aaron's my old friend. So whatever. But even then I was like, even in high school, we were all like, Aaron is something else. Like we're all this thing. Aaron is another thing on another level. He's even when we were like young teenagers, he just was like so much far beyond all of us. And so you know, I, I, but that doesn't mean I wasn't always in awe of his music, but then I moved to Boston and, you know, I was a huge Jesuit fan. I love that band. And of course like Converge. So I moved to Boston and Nate is in, I'm in a band with Nate and I'm like, this is, this is fucking crazy. And then Caleb joins, you know, Caleb asks us if he could join old Bang gloom. And we're like, yeah, if you <laughs> yeah. want to be in our stupid fucking band. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, being an old man gloom, it's like, I barely had played drums for just a few years when we formed it. So I was way out of my depth with Old Man Gloom. And I've always been kind of like catching up to their musicianship. And I feel like I'm now I'm it's fine. Like I'm I can play with Old Man Gloom and I don't have any insecurity about it. But the point is, is that at some point in the last 10 years, what I've always brought to our group of friends and all of our music is like my brain and my sense of humor and the way I interact with people. Cause it's like, that's what I'm good at. Yeah. And so at some point when social media became such a thing, especially for bands, asserting my personality into old man gloom and kind of just, I mean, for lack of a better word, taking it over and making it the fucking Santos show, not on, not just like not musically, but in every other regard, making yeah. it my little fucking, brainchild like that is it, it, it's it's like how i now understand my place in in like metal and music and i think people find it refreshing you know it's not like yeah. we're not trying to be serious we're not trying to be tough we're not trying to be this thing that we're not like this is who we are we're goofy yeah. fucking guys we make very serious music our music isn't goofy but everything else about it like we do not take ourselves seriously and i think that you know, oh, yeah. that, that sentiment and, has really resonated with people. Yeah. And that's why I, I love all the projects that are like on the, the wheel, the, on some spoke of that wheel, like mutoid man for me is yeah. just like the absolute totally. perfect blend of just goofy, hilar hilarious, yeah. but then dead serious, <laughs> you know, the music can be dead serious or it can be goofy. It's, it's a, uh, it's great. I was thinking, so, uh, you know, one of the best things for me about a mutoid man show is Ben's ridiculous antics, like his stage his, yeah. is stage nonsense. Um, but man, I would love to see, I love, a, I love a good two drum battle. So if Jordan's taking, <laughs> if, if Jordan's <laughs> taking two minutes to late night, hence I, the two of the two of you on stage doing, you and so, doing some kind battle. of routine. Oh, well, man. you know, the last, the last one I did was a Brian Eno medley and me and me and Ben both played drums on it. That's right. <laughs> and it, and it's panned hard left and hard right, which was like, cause that's, oh, that's... on that's on that Brian Eno record. That's how it was recorded on, yep. I think just on warm jets. But so we did that. So yeah. Hey, if you want to do the live version of warm jets, I'm in, I will I... tell you playing along to like, cause Ben did it first. And then I had to go and I play after Ben that fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never want to do that again. No, thank yeah, you. that that's really, I mean, it's hard enough to do that. You know, it's hard enough to play over like a bass track, but fucking drums where there's like yeah. 50 moving parts yeah. that all have to be. Especially hit. one of the best drummers on the fucking planet. Yeah, know? for like... sure. When you watch, I've been watching a bunch of King Gizzard live videos, and I love yeah. the way they do the two drummer setup where they face each other and just fucking lock eyes. Because <laughs> I, when I've never seen them, actually. They, they have two drummers on stage? Yeah, they've done. They, it's, uh, I'll send you a link. But yeah, there's a bunch of live footage with two drummers on stage, and they're just like, "I see you. I don't slow down." <laughs> like, yeah. Like, but you have to in order to like get the feel and play together. It's it would be so hard to do. Yeah. To be the yeah. second the second guy. Didn't Kaya? Yeah. Or not Kaya? Sorry, Kailessa. Didn't they have two drummers for a while? I didn't. Huh. I don't know. Well, you know, did. there's the obviously the Cody Dale Crover. Uh, Big business yeah. thing. The big, uh, big Melvin's, business, Melvin's. Big band, yeah. That shit is, I mean, because Cody is a fucking monster. And Dale he Crover is. is like, who's better than Dale Crover? You know? <laughs> yeah. Just the, watching those two play drums is just like, oh, oh. It's pretty intense. Yeah, completely. Yeah, that was super intense. Was that, that was the show. 
when when Dale was here. Oh no, that was that was Red Cross. That was Red Cross. That was a different show. Yeah, no, I love watching Cody play drums. I love I love Absolutely. every time he gets those bells out and just like <laughs> those bells in his headset. Like like the oh headset, god, the yeah. head, <laughs> that, you know when you're a drummer, like you're gonna wear a headset. Oh, like if if they could convince Braun to wear a headset, it'd be so much easier for him to play totally. those songs. But but he's just like no, not nope. doing it. Not I'm doing gonna, it. I'm gonna yeah. go like this. Not <laughs> I'm not Phil breaking Collins spears it. on that thing. Yeah. I want to. I want a headset just so I can like do between song banter. That's do all bits. I want. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Completely. Completely. I don't think we. Uh, I, we we've got another group of songs, but I don't think we have time to get to them today. No, is, there, <laughs> is there anything that is there uh, one that like sounds funny? There is one that sounds actually really okay, funny. If we do, want to dig into it, let's do the funny one. Because I, I yeah, sorry, it. I can I can talk, guys. No, no, no. it's good. No, it's great. <laughs> we we did That's what this is all about. <laughs> last last week we recorded our six month anniversary episode with our friend Susie, who's in a band called Broom. And uh, that went for three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, partially because we know each other and we just like yeah. need to, needed to catch up needed anyways. To catch up. So we just totally. recorded it. No, uh, this one, Turkey Vulture. Okay, oh, the boy. band is the band is called Turkey Vulture. The, the one that it's called Tummy Time. <laughs> the song is called Tummy Time, and it's only wow. thirty seconds long. So I was a little intrigued by this. Yeah. What can you do in thirty seconds? Song are we all dads? Time. Have we all had to experience the the horrors of tummy time? All dads. Yes. yes, we are all dads. Tummy time. Two oh. two girls. Two girls. She lifted her head. You, Look at that. Exactly. You have, <laughs> you have one. Her neck is getting strong. <laughs> is that, that a little? That's a little. <laughs> and baby she hates hand. it. <laughs> that's a little yeah. baby hand doing horns. Oh, that's yeah. what that is. Some. All right. That's some grown up forcing a little baby to do horns. We are going. Love it. Gonna, uh, what are we going to listen? All right. Oh boy. Here we go. Is like skin to skin. <laughs> that oh, is look. amazing. Oh look, there. oh chemist and you're the cobra. Oh, oh that dude. is so. That's been my favorite so far. Yeah, winner winner. That tummy time was awesome. Dude, yeah. They have a discography. Thirty seconds of just describing tummy time. <laughs> Somebody. Oh, <laughs> Wait, was it my crazy or it, I thought underneath a second ago it said the baby, like it listed the baby as one Did of it, the bandmates. As like the vocalist? <laughs> the oh, yeah, baby. the baby, the baby vocals. vocals. <laughs> that okay, is incredible. This is awesome. Oh, uh, someone's been My bored. daughter's still like, my. she's going through a real naked phase. So she's like constantly, when I'm not looking, just taking her clothes off. And I'm like, kid, <laughs> you got to My put youngest some naked on. phase lasted until she was nine. Like. <laughs> But she still is like, no, I want skin to skin. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay. I'll, I'm, not, I'm not taking my clothes off. We're not doing skin to skin right now. We're like, we're about to go to daycare. Put your yeah, clothes exactly. on, kid. Come on, get dressed, please. Yeah. So, do we, so do we ruin it by listening to one of their actual songs or do we just cut it at tummy time? I don't know. I think uh, maybe we just cut it at tummy time. All right, tummy time. That was, that was a hell of a way to end. But hey, if you that like that, perfect. go to turkeyvulture.bandcamp.com and they have, looks like they've been producing music during the pandemic starting in yeah. we got like single releases starting in june of 2019 where are they from uh connecticut connecticut, said. connecticut. oh cool right down the street oh nice all right i like i like that that cover artwork's pretty good it's got a real like high school death yeah right desk uh, <laughs> vibe to uh, it yeah and it's on the paper that it is on the paper <laughs> yeah, too i totally. think that's what they're going it. after I, that see again I feel like, like these are people i can relate to yeah <laughs> totally i am into this i am into I drew that Vulture. i drew that in high school <laughs> I d I although didn't. i do kind of wish that their name was just tummy tar tummy time that's tummy a time. Good end name. yeah tummy time, tummy time a good would be great name. here's a single called christmas apart christmas and there's apart. just a sad person Aww. photoshopped into Aww. like a snowy background <laughs> Poor guy. all right i like what i like what you're doing here Oh, the quarantine Mona Lisa song. That's great. Quarantine Mona Lisa. All right. Yeah. We like, yeah, what, we like what you're doing. Yeah, we're into it. I'm into these people. Nice. 
That's awesome. Well, we already, I mean, we usually end the show by asking your all time favorite hometown band, but um, we, we yeah, already I did just that. got ahead of everything. You did. Yeah, That's exactly. So you mentioned, do you, do you listen to, like, are you still regularly mining for new music and listening to stuff? Or are you kind of no. uh, con- content to listen to what I, what I know? I mean, it's still like my condition of like really needing a ton of time to understand music is like, it's, it's even worse in my old age. Like it takes me a long time to come around to something. And like last year, I pretty much listened to nothing but Carly Rae Jepsen, like pouring okay. and obsessing over Carly Rae Jepsen. So that was like, real. Non- no. <laughs> oh, nonstop. All of her albums, everything, rel- like just laying in bed, listening. I mean, she's incredible and the, yep. the music is so good. And I like, that's all I listened to for a year. The year before that, I got into Gillian Welsh and I only listened to oh, Gillian Welsh for like a whole amazing. year. To, and amazing. like Dave Rollins guitar playing is just like, I mean, I, in, in any genre, that guitar playing is, I don't think I've ever seen somebody who is so effortless in his guitar playing. But yeah, like that's, when I get into something, it takes me a long time and I have to pour over it. But you know, like, I love the new Sumac. I love Pharaoh Overlord. What else? I got into something, not just people I know. Um, well, I love Mammifer. Obviously, the Tabernacle record is just like, I listen to that a lot. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, I, I don't like seek out new music. And even when people recommend things, like I'll listen to it, I'll be like, oh yeah, I understand why people like that. Like I can never just <laughs> be like, that's good. I can just be like, I understand why people like that. But I, I can't it. commit but to like 20 it more yet. listens. <laughs> yeah, I need 20 more years to understand so, it. So then was there any truth to your Vancouver uh, tour diary? Stop, which which aspect where you were of it? Screaming Carly Rae Jepsen in the middle of downtown Vancouver. Uh, no, that didn't show, happen. Like... Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish. I've actually uh, in my quarantine uh, musical projects have been recording like doomy versions of Carly Rae Jepsen songs. Where are these? And that's that's real. They're all just on my computer. <laughs> They're not. I need to hear them. I would, oh, that's amazing. No, it's it's like no. it's like a lot of my writing. It's just like okay, that was enjoyable. Yeah, that's funny. Put that away. It's very Buddhist yeah. of you. Yeah, the wow. process is more exciting than the uh, having the to put my like old man gloom is safe because if they don't like it, it's just like well you don't like Aaron Turner that's on you buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, if I were to release stuff on my own, they could be like that sucks, and I'd have to be like I People suck. Might not like I, me. I, I, I suck. suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> have have you has there been a bunch of production work happening over the last year? I would imagine it kind of closed down and then started to open back like, up again. Yeah, we started back up in August um, in New York, so that's when I think LA opened up a little bit earlier, but then shut down again um but new york we opened up in august and we've been shooting since august so please I've done... please tell me you've worked on law and order at some point <laughs> no no law and order oh. i'm like a <laughs> no Jerry you know, Orbach not... stories <laughs> nope unfortunately not Does i've done some dick that? wolf but uh, oh, dick know, wolf. I that helps you yes. <laughs> okay the first time i saw dick wolf show up on a set i was like oh my god who is this homeless old man that is on the <laughs> set and like Somebody get this guy a saltine and try to sober him up some black coffee. What's going on? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I like, I'm pretty, if I'm going to, so I do two, two different things. Like I'll build the sets I'll, that's called rigging. So sometimes I'll form in a crew and rig and that's, I don't care what it is, like whatever I'll build. I build so many garbage police precinct for cop shows. It's like, I could do it in my sleep. It's so boring, but when I'm shooting something, it has to be something I'm like slightly interested in. So I'm a little bit more selective. You know, I did girls for the show girls for many years and I did broad city for almost all the whole run. And like, I like smaller and female led shows when I shoot things, but you know, like if somebody, uh, I've gotten offers to do like big network shows and I'm just like, no, cause I'll get bored and I'll hate it and I'll do a shitty job. So <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> so you don't want me. Do you say no. that out loud? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just say mm, unavailable. Sorry. There you go. And then I just go back to sleep. That's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this is this has been great. I, you know, yeah. thanks for joining us today. It's been great chatting great. and getting to know you. And <laughs> we'll, we'll give it we'll give it like a fifteen percent uh, chance of being at Psycho Las Vegas. But if we're yeah. there, we'll. I'll, I I can uh, I can give you the like walking tour of Mandalay Bay and show you how to get it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> great. And I can tell Hit you the, the best. Uh, I mean, Evan's. I mean, there are some really cool suites at the Hard Rock for sure, and I know Evan enjoys his suite with the bowling with the bowling alley and shit in it. Wow, but, uh, <laughs> but but Mandalay Bay's got some pretty wild, oh, yeah. some pretty wild rooms, and uh, oh really? And, you, and 
pretty cheap. I mean, not a, right now they're basically free, free, but who knows what it'll be by the time there's festivals again. But no, I've I've been I've like checked in, flown in for an event on a day, checked in the night before at ten o'clock, and they're like, oh, all we have left are suites, so we give you the media suite. And I go upstairs, and I have like a movie theater <laughs> and three and three bedrooms. Oh, like Jesus, I'm there for tw- I'm there for twenty four hours. I'm gonna check out at ten o'clock like, the next it, morning. Call everybody yeah. you know. <laughs> no, I've done like, that. I, I'm, I'm just gonna watch TV and go to sleep and order yeah. a seventy dollar burger exactly yeah no mandalay mandalay is a is a fun hotel you gotta gotta do the shark encounter too that's a good one they, they put all the, the... bands. i mean when we were there they put all the bands in the delano which i guess is just like a little yeah but the that's... rooms were i mean they were sweets they were awesome yeah were that's really the nice all, that's the all sweet right? tower yeah, yeah that was the like hip that used to be called the hotel the hotel at mandalay the Bay. hotel oh but it's God. yeah Wait, you guys like... are in san jose is that what you yeah said? yeah uh, i was born in san jose no shit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> which which What's the water park there? I've, I went to that water park like Raging every summer. Waters. Raging, Raging waters. waters. Yeah, definitely yeah. had some awful days at Raging yeah. Waters. <laughs> I hate that place. <laughs> they used yeah, to do a lot it's... of like shows and stuff there, right? Concerts, didn't they? I don't know. Maybe. I think they did. I, I used to see punk bands that were playing at Raging Waters. I'd read about them in yeah. Thrasher magazine because they had a giant yeah. ramp there too. Huh. Lag yeah. wagon. I bet lag wagon. Lag wagon <laughs> raging totally waters. Those kind of bands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we had a golf land with three water slides by my house. Well, we still have it because it's still by my the yeah. house that I live in now. And uh, that's where we got to go was the the water when slides. When did you move to land. New Mexico then? Uh, when I was three. Like oh, my okay. mom was my mom. My whole family's been in New Mexico for since the fucking conquistadors. But my mom married my dad <laughs> in California, and so. Once they had me, then we went back to New Mexico. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, but my 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 dad's whole side of the family is all in the Bay Area, so I would go there. Uh, yeah, every pretty much every summer. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. San, San Jose is not really notable for much of anything as far as destinations, but Raging Waters, there's <laughs> there's one. And Great America. You probably you probably Great America, to, of course. You probably yeah. went to Great America I remember that. twice. <laughs> I remember I have a very like visceral memory of that Viking ship that goes all the way upside down. Oh yeah. And li- I was listening to like Primus uh on headphones <laughs> that's perfect and just yeah. like yeah and just Bear, like yeah. being on that thing and all of my like all of my change and money falling out of my pockets <laughs> and then like looking down and seeing that like the roof of the building next to it just covered in change and <laughs> oh, yeah. i hated that ship they also had the most pointless roller coaster in the world that's not there anymore called the tidal wave which was literally just a track with one loop and you just went you just went around, yeah. up, then you would hang. <laughs> you did it backwards. And then you do it backwards. <laughs> it was so stupid. It was so stupid. Uh, but the, hey, that's also the, that's all we can end on this. That's also the site, if you've never seen it before, of the infamous Fabio slams face first oh, into a bird on a roller coaster. That's yeah, where it happens. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we can, if you don't mind just telling, I can tell one very quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Where C- Caleb... We, when Caven got signed to a major and they were in LA for a long time, they they bought them a camcorder to like film behind the scenes to put like in their whatever when they released the video. Mm-hmm. So one of the things they saw Fabio on the street and they pulled out the camera and Caleb totally heckled Fabio. And I don't remember what he said, but all I remember, and I think there's a video of this because I feel like I've seen it. It's just Caleb saying, hey, watch out for birds. I can't believe it's not butter. And then that, like, that was it. <laughs> And Fabio just turning and being like, uh, I, I, I didn't live in LA for long, but I lived there for a little while in my late teens. And uh, that's the one really fun thing is the random celebrity encounters. Yeah, and and totally. then if you don't give a shit, like if you're not trying to act like being able to do shit like that because it just yeah. <laughs> does, doesn't affect you at all to, to fuck right. with them exactly like yeah. half the, half the waiters there are trying to be actors so they don't want to they don't want to like you know they yeah they want to be cool off. Yeah. pop off they want to be cool but yeah. it was it was fun to be way more into music <laughs> Can't believe and it's just not like butter. anytime you saw someone famous just <laughs> doing stupid shit yeah oh, it man. is pretty good yeah that's amazing all right well hey happy monday although it's actually saturday of course no, it's, it's always Monday it's always on the Mo- podcast. It's always Monday on the podcast. <laughs> always Monday. Oh, so um, this comes out on Monday? Cool. Yeah, yeah, this will be out. And since we are uh, currently out of banked episodes, this will literally be out in, yeah. on this this next Monday. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks, thanks for having it. me. It was great. I had a good time, yeah.
Awesome. awesome. Maybe cool. we'll see you with Psycho. Yeah, maybe we'll see you in Psycho. <laughs> I, I, I really you. hope it happens. Hopefully. I can't yeah. wait to see uh, what happens with the PS4 next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually sent it to a complete – this kid sent me a record, and I was like, okay, I'll send you a little care package in return. And I just put the PlayStation in a box and <laughs> sent it to him. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. All right, man. Well, it was really uh, great meeting all you. All right. Thank you, guys. Time. Take care. Have a Catch great weekend or week. Woo! All right, fuck man, stories know, galore. Oh, I, he had more too. Oh, we'll just save him for next time. Yeah, well, we'll have to have uh, Santos back on because I can tell that there's just a, a buildup of stories that need to be tons told. Tons and tons and tons of stories to yes, be told. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, that was awesome. He had the nicest non-fake background too. I mean, the dude, you know, does yeah. set design for a living, so he knows how to make a room look good for a camera. But uh, exactly. Like I would imagine, like when you're interview, well, maybe if he can turn down work, he doesn't ever have to interview. But but yeah. you would want if I was gonna hire you to dress my set. Oh, oh. You gotta plug your PC in. I dude. might want to plug my PC in. Oh shit! Jesus. All right. Well, I, I didn't do that really quick. I didn't know it was unplugged. Guys. <laughs> All right. Well, JD's gonna vamp. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just vamp for a minute. Uh, you know, uh, having some fun. No, that was um, <clears throat> that was great. I I have like I said, I you know I'm a I've been a fan of Old Man Gloom. They're amazing. Um, and all just those Boston bands are just so many great Boston bands that sort of cross over between that sort of hardcore and metal. And, you know, it's not metalcore. It's more of that sludge. But um, I super, I'm super stoked to have had him on. Great guy. Uh, that was a good conversation. Um, can't wait to, to hear. But um, like we said at the beginning of the show, uh, Old Man Gloom actually did release a couple of new albums last year, or yeah, this last year, and it actually was last year, last July. Um, released Seminar 8 and Seminar 9, uh, which is like the first new music they've done in a really long time. Um, and if you, you know, if Psycho does happen, be sure to, to go check them out. Um, I'm talking about them like like there's some unknown band that nobody's heard of, which is <laughs> definitely not the case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who, who are you, the guy from At The Gates? Yeah, right. <laughs> you got Santos. You got Santos. <laughs> I think he should trademark that. Seriously. You just got Santos. And honestly, if you don't follow them, um, it is the their Instagram page. It is Old Man Glooms. I don't think Santos even has his own Instagram. He runs the Old Man Gloom Instagram like it's it's his, it's his own, and it is hilarious. Yeah, like he gives that band a personality that is distinct and sort of like their own. Yeah, which is really kind of just tongue in cheek well, and I, funny. And when he was talking about that, I totally get that. Like when you when you don't feel like you're the best musician in the band, you're just kind of hanging in there. You're you know you've caught up to everybody, but you're but you don't know what your plate you, what your role is, and then you find it. That yeah. that was probably a a good feeling to feel totally. and then for them to be smart enough to let him do it yeah i think is yeah well, i think that's that thing too and like you said there is there is something else about sort of those boston bands that are like they're really kind of they're fucking heavy and they're they're so like their music is so serious and and deep and you know loud but th th all those guys in those bands are the funniest just goofiest dudes. silly dudes are, but and, here's the question though are they as heavy as corn <laughs> I mean, or are they as fun and silly as corn? I don't know if they're as fun. As, I mean, nobody's as fun and silly as I'm corn. Just, slow mo you know, bullets and Jonathan Davis is a real crack up. Hilarious and Phil D. Ooh, that guy. I mean, he put out an entire joke oh, album. That record is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, Phil D. Sorry, Phil D. So many um, opportunities lost. No, but it is it is funny though because you know you you have these super fucking heavy bands that just they're the personality of the band is not. And then there's those, and then there's those bands that are super heavy that, like, they're fucking heavy it's about everything they do. Dead they're serious. Some dead serious dudes. True, that, true cult. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you don't, you, you don't fuck around. Yeah, I don't even want to. I don't even want to have any of those people. I hope we don't accidentally end up with one of those people on the show because we don't vet their, yeah. vet them enough before yeah. before they come on. I would always rather talk to somebody yeah. like that. Well, it's so. funny too because we we you know we've listened to some blind submissions where we're just like. I think we we have reacted to a band in a way that we feel like, oh God, I hope they don't take this the wrong way, or oh God, I hope this is I hope this is what they're going for because this is what we're getting. Yeah. And then they'll reach out later and be like, "Fuck, you nailed it! You got us! You get it! We're just goofy! We're having fun! You know, yeah. this is one of these days somebody's gonna we're gonna be like, oh no, this is a joke, and they'll be like, 
We're dead fucking serious. I'm Fuck gonna, you. I'm going <laughs> to leave my house and there'll be a car, be a black van parked black in front of my driveway. Up front, yeah. Bunch of dudes. No, I don't think Battle vests jump out and grab you. <laughs> well, that sounds kind of nice right now, actually. K- kidnapped by kidnapped dudes in battle vests. Battle vests. <laughs> That should be. That's the name of a song. Uh, well, hey, I didn't show off my records. I completely forgot, but you that's fine. Nah, I'll save them for next I'll time. Save them for next time. Yeah, we've got a couple couple bands to roll over to next time as well. Yeah, we do. It happens sometimes. Yeah. Just a cu- only two though. Yeah, we did good. Two. I'm glad we got that turkey vulture in. Yeah, that, good, was, that was a good one to end on. Good for work. Sure. Good, good time. work, turkey vulture. Good job, turkey vulture. And look, there, all- was, a, there was another one. This Arabrot. Um, I don't know what it is, but I read their description, and it was like a couple from Sweden who lives in the lives in the country with their kids and just makes they live in an old church an old swedish church in the country with their children and rock and roll is god and so i'm like oh that sounds really interesting but we'll dig into that on another episode will we i hope so but don't go listen to them i'm not gonna listen no not you i mean you the royal you out there don't do it out in the wilderness people are gonna listen to them and then they're gonna come in and they're gonna wonder what we're gonna think they they won't everybody wonders what we think (laughs) Like people are we're, hanging on to our every word, Jeff. Bo- well, I think we're becoming bona fide music journalists. <laughs> It'd be great. We do get a lot of submissions from from uh, from places now. From now we need to pu- and- Now we need to publish an address so we can get that good free stuff. For real. Is to co- to but to co opt uh, the saying from one of my favorite podcasts: "Blind submissions can't be bought." We'll always give our we'll yeah, we'll give our own yeah, opinions. Yeah. You know, this is true. Unless the offer is really. But good. I would love to if do the some of those good, unboxing though. videos. Oh, that'd be fun. I want actually, to do some unboxing. But somebody send us some shit, and we'll unbox it. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. We'll have to get a PO box. <laughs> yeah, we need. I don't want. I'm not putting up my home address. Savages. <laughs> and hey, you know we don't. Uh, we I, I I realize that we don't really do a plug. You know, if you have, if you're in a band, if you have friends that are in bands, send us music. Blindsub at gmail dot com. Um, I mean, we have a ton, but we keep getting. Yeah, send us more. You know, send us more. You know, we want to. We want to dig through. Um, send us whatever you got. We've. We've. Uh, we. We need it. Yeah. If you're and if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, make sure you are subscribed to our feed and Please. auto download. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. Go subscribe and share. Yep. We're getting close. I think you know. Uh, as a reminder. Uh, we did not forget about our King Buffalo contest oh. <laughs> on YouTube, uh, but I said that Killing it, on it YouTube. would, it would, as soon as you reach a hundred subscribers, I'm going to pick one subscriber to send that new King Buffalo live at, um, which one was it? Freak Valley. Freak Valley. And yes. The, and it is the Netherlands. Uh, yes. And or Germany. Uh, so go, f- go, go subscribe to us on YouTube because you might win a King Buffalo uh, live album. Indeed. All right. Well. For me, Jeff, and you, JD, this has been another episode of Blind Submission. We out. Thanks for joining us for another week of Blind Submissions. See episode description for links to all artists discussed in this episode and visit their sites to support them directly by buying music and merch. Share links to the podcast or YouTube videos with your friends, especially if they're in bands. Bands, if you want us to listen to your music on a future episode, please submit one song to blindsub at gmail.com. That is blindsub, B-L-Y-N-D-S-U-B at gmail.com. Bandcamp links preferred, but not required. Find us on social media at Blind Submissions. Full video episodes are available on our YouTube. Remember... We go in blind so you don't have to. Blind submissions.